Nice jump, Alistair. Dr. Jonas trattino basso just resu bed for 74 months, il fausto ritorno del torneo interno. Our camera's going off because it's in-house tonight. Nice jump, Alistair! Flying trattino basso Duckman just resu bed for 25 months. Nice jump, Alistair. Grazie. Mighty 284 just resu bed for 62 months. Nice jump, Alistair! Yeah, at Poopies just resu bed for 28 months. Nerd dickhead! The name of Cod just gifted 10 subs. Wow, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Very, very, very kind of you. Nice jump, Alistair! Lord Chaos Longshot just resu bed for 61 months, we're back lads. Thank you. Does anyone want to hear a genuine belch from Suns fan? I'm going to turn up my phone as loud as I can so you guys can hear it. You might have heard this before. Here. That's it. I am. Um, you can just hear me in the background of that recording. The teams don't look balanced. Uh, they look fine to me. Wait, wait, wait. We're getting Suns fan. Wait, we're not getting Suns fan. We're not getting Suns fan. Damn, we almost had him. <clears throat> we almost had him. Plague! Hello there. AKA Josh, AKA the Plague 34. AKA the Crusader for me in Darkest Dungeon that has let me down time and again. He is, he's just a paranoid ladder, right? Just, just it happens, you know. Stop. He just spent a bit too long looking at Kate Middleton conspiracy theories and it broke his brain a bit. And that's fine. What is your favorite? 
Well, the Kate Middleton one. Yes. Uh, I think the one I found the funniest was the idea that she had a Brazilian butt lift, uh, and the recovery time for that was about six months, uh, so she couldn't have <laughs> it till Easter. So I thought that was fucking hilarious. The most deranged one I've seen was uh, one someone did a prediction based on astrology. Um, okay. And their conclusion was she'd be ret- she'd be coming back out at Easter because of something rising and something falling. Okay. And that's fucking hilarious because the palace have already announced she'll be back by Easter. So they did all this astrology work to come to the same conclusion as something they were told. I thought it was fucking Genius. hilarious. I mean, that way you can say, told ya. Told ya. I told you astrology was spot on. I, I think the only way that I would truly respect any of this astrology and herbal this, that, and the other crap is if... Uh, Hold on, let me just tell Sydney it's too late. Um, Is if they also did... You know the way they do, like, corrections and mistakes in newspapers, where they're like, hey... I mean, they always tuck it away behind the crossword page, you know, way back. But essentially, I I, I think a few things. First of all, if astrologers had to, the next week, say, here's all the things we were wrong about in a big list... (laughs) But equally, if a newspaper is wrong, here's what I think the law should be. If they they post a headline and it's proven wrong, on the front page, in lieu of an actual headline, they have to print print the correction. That is one way I think you could fix misinformation in the press. Because that would be fucking interesting. People would not rush to print stuff that isn't true. They would have to say, we were wrong in big letters and then explain how they were wrong. That would be hype. When I'm king of the country, that's what I'm going to insist on. (laughs) You say they have to uh, produce an article within sort of 50 words either side of their original article explaining exactly why they were wrong. I'm saying front page, Blake. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. whatever, wherever, however prominent the headline was that was wrong has to be matched exactly by the correction. Exactly. So if you front page it, you've got to front page it next. If it's page page four, it's got to be on page four in the same size print, in the same size article to take up as much room with a with an accident as you do with the truth. This is a very rare KBJ game one, instantly taking the shaman. Well. I'll be. I'll, I'm going to perfectly be a hundred percent on the level with you, Plague. It's either because they're already struggling for people, or they just fancied fucking chucking him in there. I mean, I see people waiting in the wings for the next game, which bodes well. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Has the UK okay. suffered from a similar decline in local news that's happened in the US? So, there used to be local papers. And I actually watched a very interesting, I think it might have been a parliamentary select committee or something of that nature, talking about this exact issue. And a guy who worked for a local paper was talking about the fact that local papers now are mostly adverts and are essentially just promoting local businesses rather than actually doing investigative journalism for problems that are happening locally i would say in the uk it's probably not as important although it is still important but in the us a local paper might be dealing with an area the size of my country and to just rely on the national news to pick up on those things is pretty mad because local government needs as much oversight as federal government in the us and the same in the uk the council should be under as much scrutiny as the, the 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 party that's currently in power um and if i'm picking up a newspaper and it's literally discussing my area that is automatically of more interest to me but the death of the local press i think has has led to a total lack of oversight when it comes to councils um so yeah i, I agree i think that's a big problem i mean the local paper we, we don't get a local paper here anymore unless you pay for it and it's mostly online only and it's shit it's all things like mayor attends opening of this or you know here's a new business rather than here's how the council fucked up so yeah i think it's i think it's a problem i mean you need a good free press at a local level as well as a national level so yeah 10 seconds but i mean no government's going to want to for like source no council or government is going to want to put money into that because what is its job its job is to fuck them that's how they see it so they're going to cut funding as much as they can for it why wouldn't they Plague, I have good news. Oh, yes? I saw 
vans, vans plague Van. around my house. These vans have those cherry picker lift things on them. Right. And they are inspecting the telegraph poles. And on the side of the vans are two words, two magical words, fiber tech. Oh, and that, hell yes. those guys are the sort of, they're the scouts for open reach. And they go out and they survey they the beachhead. Yeah, they're literally the beachhead force. They're the landing troops. This is Omaha Beach when it comes to ISPs. They fought their way up the shingle. They're now looking at the 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 fortified positions of the Nazis, that's Virgin Ten Media, seconds. and they're thinking, how can we break through? And when Openreach plows through after a lengthy offshore bombardment, then the people of Twickenham will be liberated from Virgin Media oppression. <laughs> I cannot wait. And Ten my seconds. one of my con I have several contacts who are Triforce listeners and some stream watchers and some Twitter followers who've messaged me from within. From within these companies, explain to me what the process is and what's happening and how long I have to wait. And uh, let me tell you, it's coming. It's coming home. You've got, you've got, you've got leak whistleblowers on the inside. I literally have whistleblowers on the inside telling me how shit it is. And I also have people on the other side telling me how they're going to save me. So I'm, I'm literally occupied France at this point. <laughs> and open reach are the combined allied forces in operation overlord and virgin media of course vichy france that's the local council and the nazis and i don't think that's overstating it at all no nope, not in the slightest thank you thank you for for seeing my side of things i see a phoenix who was it i played with oh it was goat tastic was playing phoenix the other day and we were i was fearing the worst and I think we won the fuck out of that game. The bird is deceptively hard at times, but also very fucking easy. Because sometimes all you all you have to do is press R. I, I, you don't I, to, you don't have to ult. aim your R. No, but it's not even the alt. Like, it, it's the piss. Like, the reason yeah, that... The so, pisses. at Dream League, this hero was picked a lot. By the way, this is Core Hoodwink, or Core Primal, or Core Phoenix. They have Could picked Troll into Lifestealer. Why do they keep doing it? We've seen how this goes. Does AD Fire know what to do in this situation? Is he going to build I... the Ags and get inside Jido's body and feast on her from the inside out? Uh, I mean, that's both very sexually uh, aggressive, uh, and I doubt it. I don't think AD Fire knows anything. I think AD Fire will be shocked to learn that uh, armlet still needs to be built. <laughs> he might he might just stumble his way to an armlet deso and then give up there. Huh. I do. I hate to, I you know I'm a big troll believer. I'm always I'm always gonna back troll. But this is this feels really hard. <laughs> this feels really hard for a last pick troll. I I think that people see troll as a counter to life stealer and they're wrong. And I previously wouldn't have been able to tell you because I'm not a carry player. And honestly, in my mind, this is a matchup that Troll just pops his ult and essentially bashes the fuck out of Lifestealer. And, and you know, that's that. Because, like, you get a bash on Troll Warlord, Lifestealer can rage all he likes. You're going to clobber him and presumably do the damage. And you both, oh, let's say, Lifestealer builds a Radiance. You've got the missed chances on Troll. So I would think, you know, it's going to be a pretty even fight. You pop your ult as Troll, Lifestealer just gets inside you. That's it. And then when, you, when your ult runs out, he pops out and you die. It's, it's, I've seen it. I've seen yeah, it happen with my own eyes, play. It's sort of on the rest of his team to make fights more complicated, because if AD Fire has time to just think and ponder and be careful, uh, it's almost impossible for, for Troll to beat Lifestealer. But Troll, Troll is just one of those heroes that just fucks things up for you. Yeah. Shit goes crazy, and sometimes that craziness fucks the Troll. And Jido will, will find themselves in the middle of five enemy heroes, not sure what happened. But sometimes trolls will just get a rampage. It's for true. For equally no explainable reason. It's true. It does happen. So we have uh, we have a Weebs. Uh, I really wish he would stop carrying the free bleepo name. Uh, I find that genuinely annoying. Um, we have a Weebs Undying. It looks like there's a potential invasion. We have Madge on Primal Beast. Duck T on the Birdman. Jido is rocking the troll. Have they been spotted yet? Let's. I'll. I'll do this clever thing. Mango. Oh, the smoke has popped. They've seen him. They've seen him. KBJ Don Mango. Oh, this is trouble for TBM. 
The Bassmaster, that's a nice uh, ice path. Yum, yum. What's going to happen here? They're going in. KBJ is going to be first blood. Primal Beast having a whale of a time. Home zone, big trouble too. The Fatal Bonds are not doing any favors for the Radiant team here. They struggled. Uh, Weeds almost died. Everyone almost died. I've got to say, in those situations as I'm dying, I understand the urge to take decay. But a tombstone there? The they might have been able to turn it. I don't know. I might have been able to turn it. You've got the high ground. You pop the tombstone down as soon as you see them. I think they're in big trouble. David is going for this, Plague. Your thoughts? Well, is uh, I'm, I'm currently struggling with the fact that someone else is controlling my camera. What do you mean? Uh, as in... Uh, there's like an observer or something? Are you currently looking... I'm looking keeps, like... mid at Primal Beast. I, my camera is not moving currently. Yeah, so I think I, I'm just stuck on whatever you're looking at. Go look top right now. No, I'm, I'm like st getting stuck in player perspectives or something. Is there not a camera like, option for you? Uh, I'm not, I've not got camera options, no. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ponder what's going on here. I think you can reconnect. Yeah, I'm gonna try reconnecting. Uh, F5. Nope, not F5. F, no, is it G? No, fuck me, what is it? W, God, it's been a while. <laughs> what are these other options? F7 is the graph. F6? Oh, restart, we've got a first blood. Uh, Bassmaster just killed KBJ. Is not, this, un, not an unsurprising. This is Pos 3 Birdman. Yeah, I guess uh, if you can get farmed, you get like. Uh, I mean, Ashwin does it spectacularly well. You, with Mega Run and the Piss. You can kill almost any hero in the game. Even the Omega tanky ones yeah. will die before the percent damage of the pits. Well, I mean, it, it's, I think one of the reasons that it's so popular in the pro scene is uh, the Wee Wee is incredibly strong because it's a percentage of your health. It's not... Oh my god, 85 ticks down as well. Holy shit. Well, safe lane lost. Honestly, Hoodwink Phoenix, I would fucking hate to play against this lane. And, and you've got yeah. KBJ as your support who's having to walk back to lane now. Oh, it's, uh, it's uh, he didn't even TP. He's walking. He's doing a walkie walk. What's he going to do? He's going to deward up here. There's nothing up there. Didn't put a sentry down. I don't know what he does here. He's going to walk up and zap them or something. He's going to walk up and click them. He's got shackles level one, which is not, not ideal for I the think, trade. I think it's, you know, not for the trade. That's why he needs level two. But I think for the first blood, this is the thing. The lads never wait. By the way, I played with Homzo, uh, the oh, DK. Yeah? I played with him. I think it was today. He played Slada. Did a grand job. I saw some of that game because you were playing Disrupt to mid and I was tuning in for a loss and somehow against all the fucking odds because they picked a Rubik mid <laughs> even worse somehow I fucking mullered them that game <laughs> here's my thinking on Disrupt to mid right you get the ags doesn't matter what they yeah. bought pretty hype but also in terms of rotating what is the one thing that happens when you rotate this is a dead KBJ He's dead. He's ticking down. He's ticking He's down. Fine. He's fine. He's fine. What's the worst thing that happens when you rotate? As they you move away. up there, they run away. Not on my watch, Sunshine. I'm playing Disruptor. <laughs> Get back here, you. Dotes has been uh, unfortunate for me recently. We Mate, are. You're talking to the L King. I've lost so we many are... games. We played against a five immortal stack with T Governor in it. Yesterday. What, you queued into it? We queued into him. That is how bad matchmaking has been for us. This is you, Ashwin, Munt, It was Greg. me, Greg, Miles, Munt, um, and... I can't remember who our fifth was. So Greg is basically High Divine, right? You're yeah. immortal. Yeah. Miles is, well, Greg, is Greg high Well, Greg counts rank. as immortal as well. Right, so... Miles is High Divine. Yeah, so I think that's basically balanced. The difference is that, like... There's Immortal, and then there's T-Governor, who's actually really good Immortal. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, every he's single, genuinely really Every good. single... There was a five Immortal stack. Every single one of their Immortals had a number. Oh That's my God. how much... They've been queuing for ten minutes to queue into us. Did T say hi? No, he didn't know who I was. Mm. I don't think so, anyway. Um, but he was streaming at the time, and he... Uh, Bob asked him to do a GG ellipses uh, on us, <laughs> and he refused very kindly because that would have that would have killed me. I was I was very unhappy we lost that game. I was very unhappy we were in that game to be fucking with begin with. You how, know? how long did it take? 
Uh, we held our own for 25 minutes and then shit really went downhill Jeez. quite quickly. And was it like, Agreed. holy shit, this is men against boys like level of, of, of rough? Uh, I think what happens a lot when we're outmatched is they're just so much faster than we are to mm. everything. They just... Like I always feel like we we get we get ready for a play and by the, by the time we're ready to go the opportunity's already passed us by. Right. And these guys don't get let an opportunity to, uh, let an opportunity go. Or they're very good at dodging ours. Like it takes us like forty seconds to get a smoke going and get right. things ready for that. By that time they've already gone and dewatered everything. You're like, right. oh, fuck me. And it's just over. Um, and they're, they're also much better at like fighting their way back into a game. Like even if you're ahead, they don't just b back off and like passively farm. They just go find kills somewhere. Right. It was just... It was a learning experience. That's tough. That is tough. Oh, we've all been in games like that. It doesn't matter what rank you are. You will have been in a game where you're outmatched. Um, it's it's horrible because you feel like... So bad. Like, you, you honestly feel like, God, there's... I am... This is so far beyond what I'm capable of. That I can't even have fun. It, it's almost like you're brand new at the game. Like, I, I've done it's that where I go It's basically before. what AD Fire and KBJ are experiencing bot right now. <laughs> Getting their so ass kicked. much skill-wise that they just can't play this lane at all. Yeah, this is pretty And there goes cool. another death. I mean, we, we've, like, yeah, I, I've been in games like that where it just feels like, oh, shit. Oh, wow. Um, like, everything that can go wrong goes wrong. I feel like I don't have... There's no play I can make. Oh, this is brutal. This is... Okay. I don't think they should be losing this lane top that badly for Dyer, but then I click on Jido and I realize why. This is the greediest fucking item build I've ever seen. Let's have a look on Troll. Oh, yeah. my good god. The, no boots, no wand, no no stick or wand against Undying. The Javelin Rush. Wow. Not sure about that one. And we have a level 4 jungling Nakes. Yeah, but... I don't think any fire has any other choice. I don't know what he does. Because he's melee against Phoenix, so he has to walk up to the wave and always get hit by fire spirits. And Hoodwink just does uh, absurd damage for no fucking reason. Yeah, no, I don't understand this fucking hero. Eddie Fire has to run again. And he's dead again. Okay, so Eddie Fire is 0 and 2. And I actually has... think he would be better off just jungling at this yeah, point. Yeah, no, just, just leave. Uh, 22 last hits. Like, here's what you can hope, I think, as, um... Why am I seeing a ward there then I didn't see a ward there? That was weird. Maybe... It, did it just die? Where's Phoenix? Phoenix is bot right now. Oh! Oh, I had F2 on. So I was only seeing Radiant's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my bad. Um, so, I think that, uh... First of all... Duck T has had a great lane here as Phoenix. Is out farming everybody. Mango? KBJ Mango? Is He's dead so again? Dead. This is absolutely <laughs> abhorrent. Now they brought a die down here to try to bail them out. So he went I wouldn't for the, even bother. Dude, just he went keep... for the right click on the Phoenix and it was so slow. <laughs> and he just stuck it. Even while he was dying, he stuck the right click. That's, that God, takes some guts. Nuts. Uh, is max tombstone standard on a dying? I didn't think it was the case. But I, I thought you maxed um, decay for the base damage, but um, I also feel like here's here's my thought. If you think you're about to be run at, I think maxing tombstone is is okay because you're only going to get one decay off before you die anyway, and maybe the tombstone does some work. Yeah, I suppose so if I you're going to have an epic fight, apparently you're you're now only on dire vision, Ted. There we go. Thank you, chat. I was pressed. I pressed F3. F1 is for everybody. Thank you so much. Notch, you can't even spell your. Oh, hello. KBJ's in here. There's the shackle. Yeah, look at the damage. Madge, run. He's, he's trying his best. God bless him. Oh, he doesn't even get any CS. Oh, it's just, it's just, it's tough being a Shadow Shaman right now. It is. Their one, their one true hope is there's not really a great DK answer at the moment. Nice job, Alistair. Chivers just did his best for DK 46 months. So uh, I, I, I kind of think that the Phoenix in the end will actually fuck him because as another dead lad, um, as DK gets tankier, 
uh, Phoenix P does even more, and if he gets the shard, he's just eggs and sun rays. DK's melting, then the egg goes off. They don't really KBJ have a great the shit out of them. Go on, KBJ, no. He's dead. <laughs> the fucking troll summoner got in there. The dark troll summoner netted KBJ. He was like, no. No joy for you. By the way, back in the in houses, Blake. How does it feel? Oh, now Homzo's in trouble. 276 Rick just this is, uh, for this is correct. They are just running at them non stop. Oh, that's a nice catch. Homzo it, it dead. Could be a good tombstone. If Homzo has a big stick or something, oh, it's already been used. Good tanking from them. Oh, this could be so good if they had an, a single other core able to fight. Yeah, it goes don't. down. Oh, no. They are all dead. Bessie might die. Achoo! That's lovely. Am I getting match? This tombstone has been fucking huge. Yeah, Look, big oh, tombstone. Shit. Like I said, play. What else are you planning? I can ruin. You what? Well, you think you're gonna be run at max tombstone and just whop it down? And what can they do? There's now they can do. They they don't have the setup. If troll's not there, they are shit at taking it down. Whew! And Sniper is fully committed to one plan in this game. What's he going for? He's going straight he's going, Kanda. He's going Kanda, okay. I mean, I, Greg was watching my Sniper play the other day and was extremely Radiant's disappointed. So the problem was, I, I don't know the build. And I yeah. think Munt in chat said, you have to get Maelstrom first. I was like, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and you don't. You definitely don't. Because if you get Maelstrom, it just delays everything else. Also, we lost every other lane, which didn't help. I think Maelstrom is reasonable at our ranks because we're, we're quite shit at farming. Nice job, uh, so, but I think Dragonlance is just better. Yeah. Um, uh, and Let's it helps you a lot more than well, Maelstrom do you know what beat them? Was the tank Cardell. They couldn't fucking handle that shit. They could, that's the thing. Health, health nearly always does better than you think compared to just having damage. Ashy um, B, thanks for the sub, mate. Ashwin has been uh, networking this evening, and by that I mean I believe he's getting pissed in the pub. Yeah! But, uh, counts is networking. So I, I have uh, begun drinking less, uh, but in house night I have broken my uh, my self imposed drinking Lent, and uh, and I, I've decided if I'm going to do the in houses, I'm going to need some fucking drinks in me. <laughs> yeah, I saw my friend in Oxford uh, this weekend. And she started talking about things she's giving up for Lent and then looked at me like I was supposed to contribute to this conversation. <laughs> and I had no fucking idea what to say. Um, giving up religion um, for Lent. That's what. I, I'm not a religious person. I, I don't really understand. Um, I mean, I, I get it, but I also don't really understand how people can be. Because I, 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 I don't want to be insulting. But I know we talked about this on, on Triforce before. And I got some emails from religious people saying that Lewis was being a bit mean. Um, but I, I generally can't understand how otherwise reasonable adults will do things like be deeply religious. I, I just don't really get it. And Lent is one of those things where I think they're like, uh, like I've been asked that before, baby. What are you giving up for Lent? And I'm like, why would you assume that? Like, I don't assume people are atheists. But religious people love to assume that you are also religious. And uh, I I'm not. I couldn't be less religious if I tried. I think it's bullshit. So things like Lent and stuff, I'm like, if you want to give something up, why don't you just fucking do it? Why do you have a fucking month a year where you decide? It's bizarre. Or a week or whatever it is. Yeah. So, I, yeah, it's just, uh, it's not for me. It's not something I can really relate to. But yeah, I didn't have a convincing answer, but I, no. did, I did have a very nice weekend. Did you? Oh, yeah. Uh, Duck T is trying to pee on home, though. That's intriguing. Gives it, he fucking legged it. He didn't like being peed on. It's fair enough. That's very fair. Oh. Alright, let's uh, let's have a look. See what's the what's the hope for Radiant to go? Had a curry for dinner. Oh, oh hell yeah! So Do you know good. I had a I had Thai for the first time this weekend as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not. I've never really lived in Thai areas, and I oh, had Thai, shit. and it was. Oh, it's a big oh fight. Oh my god! Is. Oh the egg! 
Imagine having a dinosaur pick you up and <laughs> slam you to the ground next to the literal sun. Look at the zombies again. This is the only reason they're still in this game is this fucking tombstone. Run, DK. The P too strong. Well, this is over. Um, it's yeah, we can just tough. podcast now, Blake. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had pad tight. It was just... You it, like tight. It was like... I, I feel like I would have liked other dishes more. It was mm. like fairly bland and yeah. very like heavy and solid mm. and sickeningly fu like filling, you know? So, uh, sorry, are you saying that's the first time you've had Thai or the first, first time, time I've had in a while? First time I've had Thai food ever. Wow, okay, interesting. Just ne never lived in, in, in Thai areas. Okay, really. interesting. So, uh, I've had Thai a lot. There was, when, when me and Mrs. F first moved up to London, there was a place relatively near to us in East Twickenham that had a, a Thai restaurant called Fat Boys. Um, and it was okay. Uh, my problem with Thai food is, I think people go nuts for it, but genuinely, the only thing I really like about Thai food is the Thai curry. And I think Thai curry is excellent. Um, I really like uh, doing those like green curry, red curry, uh, like a ran ran rendang, curry, ra randang, rendang. They do one that's got potatoes in. I think that's a rendang. I might be pronouncing that wrong. That's very nice. But I I'm not a big fan of Pad Thai noodles. I I'm really not a big fan of, of Pad Thai noodles. I think it I think Thai food is okay. But give, give me a good fucking curry any day of the week, son. I mean, we just I will, had I will biryani, say the, uh... biryani with a taco doll side. Papa Dom's job done. Just, just the, the starters were an absolute winner. Like oh, the yeah. spice and all different flavors were fucking gorgeous. But disappointed by Pad Thai. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's okay. It's okay. But I, I think their curries are better. Madge is yeah, just. I, I definitely do. It. I definitely do something spicier next time. Yeah, try it. A green curry or a red curry. Ren Rendang is very, very nice. But yeah, a Thai green curry, very, very good. Here comes the egg. Yep, here it comes. No, any fire, you can't run. No. No, that was your one hope, bud. You just had to go for it. How low was the egg? It was killable if he just... Because uh, he didn't have fire spirits on him, right? Because he had, he had rage. Right. And the uh, no, the, the uh, pulverizer had already been used, so he just had to believe. Yeah. And at a certain point in the game, you're, t you're like 7 to 21. You're just going to go for a kill sometimes. Just have some fucking fun. It's no fun to just walk away from a oh, potential Oh, Madge could be in big breeze. trouble here. Oh no, I take it back. He's fine. Because the his piss. team are, are actually rotating. I, I, if I'm Stezzy, I'm going back and hitting this fucking uh, tombstone. Because I like money. What is it? That's like 150, isn't it's it? It's like 150 gold or something. Yeah, it's like a whole that. creep wave. I mean, you got it just there, but you get this and the creep wave. I'm very greedy as a support. I play, I've played PA mid, Quap mid, and Gyro Cop uh, and uh, Disruptor mid in the last few. Yeah, someone was telling me about your your PA mid. <laughs> you said I'm going to go PA so I can be really active, and then you built Battle Fury first item. And it was a right, real head but I got 20 one. kills. Yeah, no, I'm sure you carried so, the shell because PA is broken as fuck. I didn't build the um the the build. I went for the oh, old right. school build. So my reasoning was they got a life stealer in the game, and what I'll do is I will build. Battle Fury, Deso, Basher, BKB, Abyssal. That's what I did. And carried the fuck out of that game. Because <laughs> I just thought, do you know what? Yes, this is not the build, but that's still a decent build. I mean, if you've got those go. items and you're, you're gonna kicking try and match. Ass, he's finally caught in his own without help, but he's just just walking away. He has a day gone. Oh, this is, this is so sad. He, th that was four on one. And he's like <sighs> lost a third of his health. Um, so my, my thinking was, A, they have a life stealer, So I want to be able to fight him. Uh, B, these guys are clowns. And they were clowns. So yep. as long as I'm reasonably farmed uh, and I get the items that I need to just jump someone and kill them, I'll do that. And I got the shard as well, of course. I, 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 got, I almost got a rampage. Like, it, it was just... It's still... Like, like all these heroes that are out of the meta or no good, if you're leveled and farmed and you play well and you beat people up, you, you'll still win the game. So that's all I did. I just I just won the game. This is over. I think they can call it. This is absolutely devastating. Who said these teams weren't balanced? You are correct. 
Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. I take it back. Radiance Middle Tower has Jesus fucking Christ. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Uh yeah, I mean I think the the joy of your supports playing mid is you always have the triple green arrows and you just feel good about your game. <laughs> no matter how bad it's actually going, you had like 20 CS in 20 minutes on Disruptor. Didn't matter. Triple green. <laughs> Didn't matter. I mean, like, it, it is. I didn't buy any stats because I thought, like, even if I buy stats, what? Oh, like, I'm gonna. So your starting items. I was bad. Cry. The triple mango. Yeah. <laughs> but branches. I was like, what? What's my only chance here? Like, am I gonna be able to out CS a Ruben? <laughs> because genuinely, he's just gonna zap me. Whatever I buy is gonna be useless. My base right click is like fifty. Or 49 or something. So even getting a null tally or whatever straight out of the gate, it's not going to make a fucking difference. Like, it's not going to help me. I'll just level my Q up and and just try and kill him. And then as soon as I can, rotate. And that's what I did. And it worked, by God. Yeah, it worked. Because, like, Disruptor, with it, once you get the ult, like, they had a Weaver in the game. What's the one thing he hates? Being silenced. Especially when it's happening when he's level 6. He just hit 6, he's like, right, they can't kill me anymore. And you turn up and silence him, he can't do shit. Oh, oh my god, they might get a kill! Fight the death. He doesn't have the egg! Oh my god, this is so depressing. Duck T! No vision! He's a liver! He is stun. He's... Stun him! He's dead! Oh, got him. They got that's a kill, please! They got They're a kill! Back in it. That's a that's twelve hundred quid. <laughs> it just doesn't give a fuck. He has two thousand six hundred health. He's never gonna die. <laughs> At least the, I still believe this DK can carry. Like this is no. an okay DK no. game. This is a super duper over. I they might get match. They're doing some minor amount of deeps. I give them, Plague, a 1% chance of winning. I think that's fair, but that the entirety of that 1% is Dragon Knight, so I'm not incorrect. I, I actually think the entirety of that 1% is that their carry is Jido Troll. Troll can throw this game, it's true. But AD Fire is going... I literally called it AD Fire is going to go Armlet Deso and not know what he's doing. And so, there he is, building the armlet death zone. <laughs> so Troll is 0-1-1. All Jido has done is help out with a kill and die. Jido has done... They have done nothing, nothing, towards this 27 kill ratio apart from a lone assist, which might have just been at the very start of the game. It is almost quite impressive how underfarm Jido is, given that they're the same farm as the DK who's being stomped. Yeah. And they've had the entire map to farm. So, yeah, well, definitely. they've got 166 last hits. But net worth, they've just been hitting jungle creeps, so... Yeah. Still, someone's got to do it. But I've got to say, if you're this large, um, maybe hit some lane creeps. I know that's crazy, but oh god, KBJ is dead for the 12th time. <laughs> It's 12, 12 times, times at 22, uh, 22 minutes. That's a oh death. My. So he's dead. God. He's He lives. He dies. He lives. He dies again. Not he lives. He dies. He lives again. <laughs> he dies. He lives. He dies again. I mean, this three are too much for the new team to handle. Phoenix, Hoodwink, Warlock taking a tier two. <laughs> it's just... There's just no way they can do anything. Me uh, like... They got Kander, I guess, but this sniper, like, his net worth, even though, it's, at least the sniper's net worth is useful, if that makes sense, right? Like, even though it's really way lower than, than Jido's or, like, Madge's, it's still useful net worth, right? Kander will do something. Sure. The DK's net worth is really useless right What's now. What's DK got? It's half a Manta, mm. right? So even though he's more farm than Sniper, he's actually a way worse hero. And then you go down and look at Lifestealer, oh, his net worth is t entirely Let's worthless. Oh my god. Oh my just, uh, god. You can you can get away with being under farm as long as you finish a cheap item that lets you go fight. But He's they have nothing. From bottom, like, they have nothing. Oh. This is so sad. Uh that's trouble for Dunzo, as I call him. Dunzo. Dunzo the, knows the meta though. Yeah. I still see went to uh, Orchid Slada earlier or some shit. Yeah, no, really he good. uh 
So the, the problem was we desperately needed a blink in that game, and he went like first item orchid, and then we lost because um, like he tried his best, I think, to do things early. But the problem was like it ju it just wasn't working. Like yeah. we we needed someone to start fights. I can't remember which game it was. It might have been one that we lost. But there was a moment I looked and I was like, oh, my Sada has an orchid and nothing else. And it was like, he blinks, silences, crushes, and dies. That's what happened yeah, in that it is, game. Yeah, it is the meta, but it's like all these things, pros get their items like three minutes faster than Yeah, we they do. So it really changes how big an item is when it's like three minutes earlier. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I think um, another thing they do that, that a lot of the goons, and pretty much everyone that watches Pro Dota and tries to copy it overlooks is, it is dependent on how it's going. It's not just, oh, I uh, I get this item. You've got to think, right, what have they got? How's the game gone? What do I need? I mean, we saw this with Riley Jug, who set his mind on a Bout Fury, and there was no changing his mind. There was, that was it. And then he proceeded to not farm, and I think he then got... Didn't he go Bout Fury BKB Jug? Wasn't that the legendary Riley build in an in-house? It was something like that. sounds fairly familiar. I was like, oh, so Riley does nothing. Like, he's farmed the Battle Fury in order to farm a BKB, and then the game is over. Jido has managed to kill Roshan. No surprise there. And now they're going to try and do something. Dunzo does have the Manta and is working on a Blanc Dagger. Madge has a Dagon 5 and Phase Boots and a Kaya and Sand. He's going, he's going in. divine. Let's go into Vine Rapier next. What's the plan right there. here? Oh, and they kill KBJ for the 13th oh, is time. Is he there? Oh, I can't, I can't comprehend it. No, there's no comprehension. You have vision of them coming in as well. Yep. Look at that. The wards are there. Nope. I wouldn't KBJ worry. KBJ is there to die. Did They did the Tormentor. They stole their Tormentor. Oh, God. Madge is in. It's just no, there's never going to be any punishment for him. Uh, Gino. Gino. This, this might hurt. Yeah, that's yep. the Aegis. Can we help here? Can we help? Can we turn around and help? Don't run away. Yeah, there's the blink out. Oh my god. Well, now, here we come to the critical problem that the goons have, which is going high ground. Oh, oh, oh shit. Shit. And KBJ is almost dead again. He was just fighting again. bravely to the end. This though. is good though for. Uh, oh god. Is it? Alright, I take it back. Alright. <laughs> and the egg is down. The P is down. And Homezo is in big trouble. Homezo is dead. That's four dead. Gino might die. And here goes. Uh, Madge is on Dave on Street. Dave on Street. Oh, no! He got Dave gone. He couldn't get anything so off. Close. And they've lost a lane of buildings. There's a buyback on Sniper. No one else has buyback. Yeah! Oh! Yes, Dave! got it! He, I think he actually bought a shard there and then to he do that. He almost got Gino. That was actually so good. Did he? Did he plunk away from him and then shoot him? No, he. Yeah, he. He concussed. He bought shard and grenaded Madge into the fountain. Oh, beautiful! That's actually, such a slick fight. David, I'm so sorry I missed that on cam. Didn't didn't think anything was going to happen. That's my bad. Well, I thought it was good, and then it wasn't. It looked good for a split second. And then all, they, the enemy team cast a single spell, which is Desi dropped his ult, and then it was over. Yeah. This is a Pavise Spirit Vessel Maelstrom build from uh, the Bastmaster. I have not seen people building Pavise lately, I've got to be honest with you. Yeah, Pavise kind of disappeared because Vlad's is back. So if you want an armor and like physical damage reduction item, you just whack on a Vlad's. And if you want a magic damage protection item, you whack on a mech. And that's all the support measure is. You get one of those two, maybe a drums if you're like a CM or something, and then you just go greed items. Like uh, you, you glipe near for your, your headwink. Because actually it turns out having five cores is just better than having three. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the map is so big now, why not? I do wonder yeah. what this next big patch is going to change. Gido's in. There's a DK ult. 
We have wall of golems in 30, so we could just bing chill here. Bide our time. Is... Pretty punishing. The snakes. That's the mini snakes. Just just wait here, lads. You don't need to go up. Homezo's popped the manta and is sending the illusions out. We can they gone them? Where's our where's our Madge? Madge is mid, keeping that pushed in. They're just not scary enough yet until he's a until he's black dragon. If he goes, I think he actually doesn't go blink here, just go ags. That's, yeah. that's the only hope you have. Because you just need to hope they fuck up, right? Yeah. Cheeto? Maybe, maybe David gets a divine or something and they win this game off of that. That's, that's the only other Cheeto hope. Cheeto is okay. Gets the heal off. So the the other thing is judo judo has no stats right so judo can die because uh, yeah. they they've gone blink um, Mjolnir, morbid mask so only has sixteen hundred health Blake. exactly health pool is is very low and is now finished the Mjolnir. oh my god eighty fire has finished that deso though job, has risen to third from bottom on Eagle network just as bad for oh, 45 yeah. months Farming. This is, this, they don't even have the sorridente. dignity to like kill them cleanly. They're doing it with fucking swoop meteor hammer. This Pretty is brutal. disgusting. So, um, he, uh, 85 was fourth from bottom, is now third from bottom. Yeah, yeah, no, he's he's flying down the ranks. Uh, in goes Homzo. There goes the BKB Gino. from Gino. Gets the root on the DK. There's the ult. That's lovely. Oh my god! Ah! Call it! Call it immediately! Holy Jesus! Madge isn't even going to be able to finish his Divine Rapier. Stezzy's Fatal Bonds with Rock there. <laughs> Annihilator them, my god. Eri! This is our first game back after, like, three months! And you deliver up this shitfest? I'll say that's, that's, he's out of, he's, you know, he's lost his touch a bit. But second game, he'll be locked in. Report Eri! I don't care if KBJ's kept this what he picked. Step in and make an executive decision and say this is ridiculous. Shocking. Why would Eri do this? Exactly. Why would Eri do this? Shut up, Sarah. Don't make excuses for the man. That, that, that's, Sarah, there's you fucking just, rat. That's just shocking. Sarah the rat stepping in and trying to, trying to back up her boy. Boo. I've been invited by Eri to the lobby. Boo. Uh... MVP, I'm going to give it to Madge. Why not? LVP, Ari. You're not right. You're, you are incorrect. I suspect strongly that that game was so fast, Ashwin won't be back yet. Oh, that's true. So, nice so uh, job, Toby is now Tundra's Fire Fire say just resubbed for 57 months. That it was Gentilia game of Dota 2. Oh, that team's fucked. <laughs> the team think... is pure Topson Toby, 9 class White Mon. That's Tundra. I think Toby, Red could test this. Toby is the only nice player that job, I genuinely, unironically am a hater for. Oh, wow. R just resubbed for 60 watched, months. He was playing, sitting he used to play on Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Get better from here. Thank you for the sub. Go on. He used to play on Entity, I think it was, mm. and they had like a really sick team. They had Watson, who was an insanely talented Pos one, and they'd always give last pick to Toby, and he'd always pick some cringe shit like Brewmaster or Beastmaster or like Broodmother, and he'd always fucking lose. And it's like you have like the best Pos one player in the world or some shit at the time, and you always give your last pick to this Pos three who always fucking sucks. Interesting. And so now he's he's here to drag down another team. No comment. I don't know. But that's the opinion of the community. Which team is Storm Stormer playing for now? Storm Stormer is Bet Boot. Well, no. That's he Toronto last Tokyo. played for Entity. So it says here he is in. He's inactive on Entity. It's a shame. Daniel's a top lad. Very large German man. Where Ashy be? I 
I believe most likely still quote mark networking. Really? Yeah, he has actually just moved to a new a new project team. Uh -huh. So it's gotta be initially social. Nice jump, Alistair. Super Pamens just resu bed for chinquantadue months. Without Return of the house no mate shitters so bring us good me. laugh center. Do a bit of six nations chap, because more blood for the good god. Go on without me. <laughs> Go on without me. He sacrificed himself. What a good lad. Go on without me, he says. That's like if you were like a, a squad that had been separated from the rest of its uh, its lads. You know, we've lost the other... You've landed. It's D-Day. Going back to World War II. It's D-Day. Paratroopers, you've landed. Can't find the rest of your unit. Ashwin stumbles into a brothel bar den of iniquity. And he's like, going without me, lads. And you're like, are you sure? It's like, yeah. Going without me. You're like, oh, what a brave sacrifice. <laughs> How does one recover after a lane like that? I'll say AD fire. That's a very good question. So okay. we, we, we did feel that you didn't ditch the lane quickly enough and you and KBJ kept coming back there. And I think in a way, and Plague will tell you the actual way, but in my opinion, you should just go jungle um, and KBJ should just go fucking join another lane and try and get kills. Put some wards down to defend yourself while you're jungling and you just have to hide and hope for the best. I mean, what should have been a good matchup against Troll because you should have been more farmed. Like, 85, you were third from bottom on net worth. However poorly the lane has gone, you then at no point achieved money. Like, at any point in the game did you have any money. You had so little net worth that you were a, a literal non-factor in the game, as I'm sure you found out. So you can't just blame that on the lane, because whilst the lane was poor... It's not like you couldn't have found money somewhere. I don't know what you were doing because I wasn't watching you because you weren't doing anything as far as I could see. So if the lane goes so poorly that you just have to ditch it, you should be able to recover. I mean, you'll be a bit behind the troll, but troll also just farmed. Like it should have been 4v4 and maybe you join those fights and it's 5v4, but you just kind of didn't farm or hit creeps or didn't get any money or something. That's what it looked like. Anyway, Plague will tell you. So just purely in laning terms, you've got to select a hope. You've got to, you've got to select a leader who you think for the next 10 minutes is going to be the, the, the thing that brings you back. And then you send both supports to his lane. And that's, uh, that can be your mid, your carry, or your offlane. You just say, you are now the hope. Go, say, go be our savior and send in both supports. You just start 3 v 3 And instinctively, the enemy supports will come as well. And that means it turns into 1v1s and you can just like pull waves or find wave farm here and there and hit jungle in between. And that's the only way you can do it. Because if you try and like fight your way back into a lost lane, unless you bring that extra support, unless you designate yourself the hope and pull those resources in, you'll just lose faster. There you go. So always con concentrate your resources on the hope, on the on the hero that's best fit to fight. Uh, Which was they probably the DK space. in this situation was probably, probably the DK. DK. So what you what you do is you you send KBJ top through the portal. You get a scummy kill with a surprise a surprise shaman appearance, and then you push tower with DK. And that will drag Hoodwink top, and suddenly Phoenix is still a bitch to lane against. Don't get me wrong. But you're no longer going to be dived and killed. You're going to just survive on the edge. And if it gets rough, you just infest a creep and leg it. Like, when you play against a good lifestealer, any time it's looking rough, they hop in a creep and they fucking leg it. And you're like, ugh. You can do that squeagle, but it's generally... You absolutely can. Lifestealer can't really do it because as a ganking force, he's shit. He's dreadful. If you have like a Sven or something, you can go and chuck a stun. You generally only want to bring the carry to that top lane though, or to the, the bot lane, to the off lane, uh, when you can take the tower. Uh, like if they're bringing overwhelming force on your tower, you swap sides and take their tower at the same time. Always try and trade. But generally, I think, I think the rule I see for a lot of carries is... Uh... You should always be hitting creeps. Like, you, you definitely had a window there where the, they're off fighting, your team is perishing, but you could have been hitting creeps. To be third bottom net worth, there's no real explanation for that beyond you either weren't hitting creeps um, or... I don't know how you're missing last hits in the jungle. But, I mean, when you go to the jungle, you should also look... Like, keep your eye on the minimap, and when there's a lane that is clear and you can see the enemy team, go hit the creeps in the fucking wave.
Because every creep that dies to just your regular creeps pushing them is yeah, lost exactly. money. The jungle creeps are still going to be there. You should be off there hitting every lane exactly. creep you can because it's worth so much more. So you go to lane, you kill the creeps as fast yeah, as you can, you go back to the jungle. That. Just keep doing that over and over again. But I mean, I don't know what you guys are doing in your downtime, but for the carry, unmolested for much of the game remaining. to be bottom three net worth means you just weren't hitting creeps. Five seconds remaining. Like, if you were joining fights, I did not notice you in those fights. <laughs> That's how badly it went. Dire team ban. I will say, don't be too hard on yourself because when you lose all three lanes or yeah. you're just you're losing everywhere, every engagement you take is a loss. Yeah. There's not exactly. much. Yeah, you, you can lost do. all three lanes super hard. Like that game was over. Five. Match had a free lane. Your I mean nice the, the jump, off lane. Cad 0831, okay. just resubbed for then 93 months. You had KBJ had died fucking twelve times by twenty two minutes. Like the off lane, the DK and who was the DK with? The Undying? Undying. Yeah. When, when, they did well. When so that was the problem, right? They, you actually pulled the Undying bot to help you out further, and that would have meant the one lane you were doing okay, you sacked it to try and bring you back in, right? You selected yourself as the hope, uh, and you brought both supports to come help you out, and you weren't, you were not the hope. You were, the, you were the burden that had to be abandoned, <laughs> left to die in the in the wilderness. Like imagine uh, this. To go focus on DK. Think about you're the enemy team and you're ahead. Are you going to hunt one lad who's way behind? Or three or four lads who are grouped up and you can see where they are. Nice job, I'm always going to go for the juicy. The name of God just Ooh, there they are. For we can get them. Because you want to press your advantage. And killing four heroes means you're going to get at least one objective. Killing one lone underfarmed lifestealer? Who gives a shit? Like, that's a waste of four heroes' time. But 4v4, where you're definitely going to win, that's great. So when you're alone and the rest of your team is off doing shit and taking fights and, sure, losing them, but maybe it's like... You get a couple and they get four of you. If you're behind, Ten if you kill two of them and they kill all of you, I think that's that's okay. Because they're ahead, so you're going to get more money from them than they're going to get from you. Especially KBJ. KBJ, killing KBJ costs you time and money. That's how far behind KBJ was in that game. It actually said minus 800 gold every time they killed KBJ. That's how bad it was. So, so you, the, you should just be the ninja off farming and no one gives a shit about... And then suddenly you're inside DK, you blink stun someone. By the way, DK did like no damage because he kept going on the primal beast. Because what could you do? You had, you had no answer to primal beast. That's another issue. I'm, I'm, it is delightful that down here in the depths, no one has to ban Chen. No one has to fear it. We're freed of, yeah. of Chen's oppression. There, there, there should be a goon one day who can only play Chen. Much like Winston can only play uh, uh, Oracle. And very Ten well. There will be a goon one day who, who can play Chen and only Chen. Radiant team back. I speak for the trees. Profit. What's their answer to Profit. I smell a PL. Okay, I've I've done this PL versus profit thing before. You think you're really cool until he gets the the leash, and yeah. then you're really fucked. You do still have Manta though, don't you? It doesn't break you out of the leash because it still applies upon you. If you're inside the trees. If you're inside the trees. So I think so if you actually... Manta and it bumps you out. But even then, yeah, but essentially, as as a, as a like yeah, as a profit. You have to get lucky and tree the exact right fucking PL, which is harder than it seems. Because late game, there's like permanently 10 PLs around. Manta illusions, and then he hits one creeper, suddenly there's 17 PLs. It's like, who am I fucking sprouting here? So the tech I've heard for countering Profit's cause now is you keep Light Collector, I think it's called? Yeah, for the, the tier 2 killer. or tier 3 neutral item. Uh, and every time you activate it, it destroys trees around yeah, yeah. you. You're like... I don't need to keep a Quelling Blade into the late game. I just have to keep a, sh a slightly shit neutral item. But... That's good. They're thinking very hard. Who's Creamy Milk? I don't recognise the name. Who's Harold Helldive? That might be Reg. Radiant Team Pick. Harold is wing nuts. Red. Thank you. Do you like to see a bit of wing nut? Pianist, what are you talking about? 
which game was I having a blast with this single player campaign? I think they're talking to Jido about their solo player oh, yeah. <laughs> PvE <laughs> experience of dates. So Creamy's near. And it's good to see Creamy Milk turning up. I think it's been something we're missing from uh, previous in houses. A bit of Creamy Milk. Oh my god. Right. Not holding back at all. Straight in with a bounty. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. I think you need a bit of a bit of beef for your pick here. That's a bit of beef. And that's a bounty fucker. Big lad. Ten <laughs> big lad. Um and a decent answer to bounty. They need to combo with a bit more team fight or a bit more backline jump. That's the two directions you can take this draft now. You either go, we're going to massively single target focus someone down with a Slardar and Hoodwink ult coming in and some mid that jumps, or we're going to go for a team fight to back up a Slardar jump. I mean, in terms of team fighting mids, what do you think of? Because what I, um, I, I can't really think of many. Like, think... most people assume, like, oh, you get Puck or Invoker. Because he's got like big CC spells. Or yeah. Puck, you've got Dream Coil. But beyond that, it seems to me like damage. But in terms of team fight, as a Puck player, if you come in and you Dream Coil three guys and you have loads of single target, you're still may and also if you if you watch the way the pros play against Puck, as soon as they get Dream Coil, they'll just run, break the coil, and keep running. Because it's not a very long stun. It's only a bit of damage. And it's better than just fucking standing around. Against Five bad players, they're like, oh, I can't leave because I'll break the coil. Who gives a shit? It, does, it stuns you for like one second. Just keep running. I think Puck, Pango, and DP would be my three Pango, like, team I faulty. think, is actual team fight. It would be my three team fight team mids. But DP, in terms of team fight, is just we either have to run away or focus this hero. Which is more like area denial. It's almost like saying, oh, DPO is up. Uh, we just have to back off. So it's not like, when I think of team fight, I think of things like, I'll, I'll put Void in a team fight bracket because there's always a threat of a Chrono and a good Chrono can literally wipe an enemy team. Warlock has team fight. Tidehunter has team fight. Pango has team fight, as you mentioned. There are lots of heroes out there that have team fight, which is AoE disable, loads of stuns. Rather than, is it team fight if I pop my ult and you just have to back off? Is that team fight, or is that like yeah, how are you so. gonna fight me? Like that's more like you can't fight me because I got my ult off. Like Lesh when he's farmed is like that. It's like well we can't fucking go on the Lesh. I don't I don't know if it's team fight. Storm is not team fight. Storm is with Ags is set up, but essentially you need that follow up. Mars is team fight. I'd say Centaur is team fight because you can charge the entire fucking team in there and you can get like a multi-person stomp off and just run over everybody. But I don't think Storm is team fight at all. I think Storm is much more about single target. Think about his itemization. You want to get things like Orchid and shit like that. You want to pick off. You want to go on the supports and pick them off. Green Night Stalker team isn't team back. fight. He's pick off. Single target pick off. Okay, I've... um. There's this new Monkey King build that everyone's doing, which is why the hero is a little, a little bit back. Uh, and it's Gleipnir, basically. It's a bunch of other items as well, but the, uh, the only interesting one is Gleipnir. I don't think you can play Gleipnir against PL. I think you have to go Mjolnir. So it'll be interesting to see if, uh, if MK makes the, what choice MK goes for this game. Because Gleipnir is just not enough fucking damage to kill the illusions. You need to be able to stick the shield on yourself to get the additional procs, and that's how you kill him. 
Yeah, I will. I'll agree with chat here. Ready draft is very boring. Um. What I'm fucking. Dawnbreaker isn't exciting. Watching her press R from the other side of the map. No, because it's all about. <laughs> it's all about just not dying. There's nothing here that's like, oh shit, yeah, they're gonna look for fights and try and get kills. They're just gonna be like, oh, you jump us, you fool, you dare try to jump us, get owned. Like, how do you kill PL with this draft? With great difficulty. With Dawn uh, coming you in. You need you need level twenty five, uh, dis undispellable haze, and that's the only way you kill PL. <clears throat> it does have a bounty hunter on the team. You are correct. That should mean a free L. However. Track on Hoodwink and Monkey King is very good if you have yeah, a way to clear trees. But you have Avenge. Like, track against... These are two heroes that like to escape using either... Basically, both using the trees. Hoodwink by scurrying into them and Monkey by jumping on them. And if you have them, um, track. They can't fucking get away. This could be a long one. Dire team pick. Okay. All right. Fuck the society livers. I want the Goonfather to, to win this game. They've picked their draft Viper. Is only, the only thing they're going to do is say, jump us, pussy. And that's all they're going to do. They're going to sit there and hit your towers and say, try Ten fucking jumping us. And you can't. This is absolutely So it, it's shocking. a difficult puzzle to, to de Five deconstruct for Goonfather. Three. But they need some fucking get up and go. They need like a void spirit or some shit. Lena, oh, it's a bit more PL counter, and it does well in Vi with Viper against Lane, but they're so dependent on Slaughter to do everything. If I spank myself goes like slightly wrong, they're fucked. God. Well, let's settle in for a long one. Get, yep. get, get your coffee ready. Wake the kids up. Get some good <laughs> hot might coffee. Actually, in might actually go make a coffee. Yeah, do it, Plague. You got Why time. Why not? It's all right. Be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> What a fucking draft. Ugh. Prepare for battle. Mohawk Furion. Um. Yeah, that's fucking dreadful. What is this? If a lad turned up to battle like this, you'd think, what on earth is this? He's got the frog curry. Nice on that jump, Alistair. Barov Glondike just resubed for 25 months, more than two years. Thank you. How times have changed. Indeed. Do you know what I wish the goons would do? Is hold their point? Look at this. Like, like, uh, matey potato is done. Just wait. Oh my. Eagle dead. The 
Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Creamy milk stole their bounty rune. I've got to say, why would you take Wave of Terror level 1? This stone would be pretty good, no? Or well, maybe it's really good, I don't know. Wow, a twofer. Creamy milk is going to pick up some bounties. Larry has... What? What the actual fuck? Larry has teleportation level 1. What is that? What's the thought process here? Dan getting fucking mullered. This is a good pick from Evil Teddy. MPR, that's absolute bullshit, mate. You get the fucking sprout and you start harassing the enemy support. You sprout this lad, what does he do? He's got to eat his way out. But then you're clicking him. You get the deeps off. You didn't get fucking teleport. How useful is this ward going to be? Time's out in 2 minutes 30. Like if you want, you could fucking get TP level 2, which I do, and then do it. What, what use is this, level one? Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Well, you need to place this deep-ass ward, level one? Dyer's I mean, if they place that dead. early... Okay. Who gives a shit? Like, if that was for the fight, great. They got first blood and more. That was good. You don't follow it up by saying, oh, I'll take TP so I can place more vision where I'm not going to fucking need it. If you're going for Courier Snipes, fair enough. But you can wait for level 2. Oh, wow. Evil Teddy fire. kicking ass. This Viper's losing. Nice. Evil Teddy is away with it mid. It's going to be level 5 in no time. If a, if a fucking support prophet comes to my lane and they've leveled TP, I'm going to fucking cry. That's so sad. You can use the, the fucking sprout to save people, to annoy people, makes everybody buy a quelling blade. I guess they're going to do it anyway, but the point is, let's say they're going on your boy, you put one down, you'd be amazed how often people misclick which tree they're going to eat their way out of. You get them in a trees like this, they click the wrong tree, they're stuck. Happens all the time, especially at this level. What are you, fucking Topson now? Come on. You're going to pull off some amazing plays with your fucking TP? Fuck off. Plague went to make a coffee. I recommended it. Because this is an incredibly boring draft from the Dire team. Look at this. Viper mid. PL. They've got fucking Dawn, so you go to anyone and Harold Helldive will turn up. The one good thing is, hmm, Evil Teddy is winning mid. So hopefully Viper has a terrible game and can't do shit. That would, that's the dream. Hello there. Hello. You've missed Viper losing mid to Lena very hard. Oh, delightful. As in, Evil Teddy has 25 and 6. 
Viper is 10 and 5. Oh, holy Radiant's shit. And died. He's, he's definitely missing some stats, I think. On Viper? On Viper. Yeah. There's like something wrong with his items. Maybe this bottle is looking weird for me. He has a quilling blade um, in his backpack. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's in case profit rotates on him. I think in general, if you if you if you can't reliably push a lane out, bottle is a really quite shit item for you. Yeah. If you right. need health regen, you're better off going like magic wand than. Here's my question Andros. for you, Plague. Uh, Larry Lama, level one teleportation on profit. Explain uh, that. To yeah, me. it's it's more standard than than you might think. Why? Because uh, you get damage bonus when you land in. Yeah, but he's not using it. Like, level not, one. But I um, think quite a lot of good mage profit go it. Because they can but just But they use it for shit it. like getting, for example, picking off people's couriers and shit like that. Like, I've yeah. seen some people do that. But level one, you could just as easily get Sprout. This like, he had, he had fucking teleport when they had it. Look at that shit. They're, that's why he didn't fucking get it, because he can't land a Sprout. Um... Like, obviously, everybody buys Quelling Blades now if there's a profit in the game. Oh, shit, there's a Storming Eagle coming in here. So, Storming Eagle ganked mid once already, which is what has begun saving Dan's lane. He got a kill on Lena for him. Okay. Uh, and you see, this is the slight problem with profit. Is that, like you say, as long as you have Quelling Blades, you, the kill threat is not major. So, even though Bounty's left, Harold Held Up isn't actually being pressured that much. Yeah. You still hang around, get XP, chill out a bit, stop them pulling. But, Whereas it, here's, here's like what you do. Here's what you do. Yep. So, people think of Sprout as... I mean, I, I, I played a lot of Profit, right? If you see that another Quelling blade, blade, of course, you Sprout them. If they just come to lane with, oh, this could be trouble for I spank myself, he's okay. Um, no mana on uh, on Scipio there. Oh, hello! Larry Lama's, in. Larry Lama's revealed himself. Going for the kill. Good to get it. Oh, he's gonna creamy escape. milk. That's a real Larry Lama play there. That's why I got a level one, period. Yeah, he couldn't do that with it at, say, level two, <laughs> could he? That, that's This is the real pros and cons of a Prophet, right? Only Prophet can make that kill happen. Right. But any other hero other than Prophet and Monkey King, is this Dawn, like, doesn't exist in this lane at all. Yeah. Like, he's such a weird lane here that he's so strong and so <laughs> weak at the same time. Like, you've got to be up against the right lineup. But, but here's what you do. You sprout, like, if you can to block off people's exits. Because then, if yeah, they absolutely. Quelling Blade, they can't do shit. Like, you can trap them. So, if you look to the right of Viticus, those trees there, if you put the Sprout between those oh trees, they're, God, like, trapped, Dan. right? Oh, wow, no Lena just died again. Way. Dan lives. Was that a, another Eagle Rotat? No, Eagle came at the end there. Dan just lived on it. This is the fucking power of Corrosive Skin. He tanks the f all of Lena's spells and just survives. It doesn't even pop his stick. Just holds it and holds it, keeps baiting him in, and the last second, Sticks up and kills him. Nice. Also, the benefit of being under tower, right? A little bit of armor, a little bit of health regen. Hard to kill some of these agi heroes under tower. Creamy milk has no mana. Oh, they've got him anyway. There's a dead PL. Oh, I'm I'm so glad you said this. Go get a coffee suggestion. I'm I'm in a delightful mood right now. Just <laughs> sipping a nice hot drink, you know. Why did Larry TP there? Larry, you got to go behind. You got to go behind, bud. This is where I like one level in trees early on to tank the tower hits so you can dive. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I can uh, I can support that one. <laughs> That's a very niche use uh, compared to what you get for the benefits of bonus level in Q or level in W. Three zero two on Viper. Couldn't he ditch the lane for W Max to farm stacks. Um, he doesn't need to ditch the lane apparently. He's got he's four one and one, so no sweat here for Viper. Um, oh, he's just come up here. He's revealed himself. Um, the thing is, if you if you max your your Nether toxin um, and go to jungle, you're giving Lena a free lane, and you are still a threat. I mean, he has just killed her twice with help, uh, even though they have a profit on the team. Who apparently, can never TP to help this Lena. Oh, and he's dead. There goes Lena again, and can they get more? They can. Here comes Petty Jakobsen. He is also dead. Rest in peace, Petty Jakobsen. This is a uh, Viper level nine. This now. is Viper shit. Yeah. So uh, Viper's W is a garbage spell. It used to be um, good. They nerfed the fuck out of it. Maybe it you missed that. Good, that was even. even oh, I want to say. I want to say four years ago. 
I want to say it was that long ago. It might not have been that long, but everybody just play Viper. You make stacks, you farm them with your W, and you are the most farmed guy in the game. But this is not the thing anymore. It, it's just, it's just not, not good. Yeah, you, you, you play for very high stats, and you play off the you're, you're just very hard to kill right now. Oh, no he's going really for the has... block off. Wait, where's he gone? Oh, that's that's unfortunate. This is some bad profiting. <laughs> Can I tip? You can't tip. I can't. I wish I could tip. I wish spectators could tip. Meant to ping, says Vidicus. I like shards. I don't know what that means. Uh, he got tipped, and Vidicus apologized because oh. uh, he didn't mean to tip him. And I think that's that's disgusting. If you're going to tip someone, even if you do it by mistake, you immediately have to be okay, toxic commit. to back it up. You commit. All right, they're going for Ice Bank myself. Eagle is using the Bounty Hunter powers to chase him down. And he's dead. Can they get more? No, they're just going to back it up. Uh, Dawn died. They found How him. did they find that Dawn? <laughs> How is that possible? Uh, TP's what? off cooldown now. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I, I gave up. I thought she was, was going to Was Larry just searching that entire fucking time? I guess time? he was. I guess Larry was just looking. Another toxin level one will hundred to zero range creep, says Eri. So yeah. you just yeah, but that's if you bosh it down and they don't fucking contest it at all. So the uh, Lena will actually have a tougher time than she used to against Viper. I hadn't considered this. Now that the break is on Viper Strike, mm. uh, breaking Fiery Soul is really fucking tough for Lena. Yeah, actually. that she doesn't do shit. Because normally you can just you know shift your way out of some Nether toxin. You wouldn't even get it cast on you anyway. It's not like you know, oh it's hello. Easy to get on Lena, but. That's a nice spot. That's a nice spot. Yum yum. This is this is kind of very accurate for, for what I was talking about, how you recover losing lanes. Right. You pick a winner, in this case it's Viper, and you just help them out. Help yeah. them out more and more, and you drag other people in. So look, they brought three for die, they brought three supports mid. The second that happened, they just ganked top. Oh shit. Dan is just on one here. Look at this. And now you can just keep playing around your Viper no matter what. Oh shit, Eagle? Dies. Uh, creamy Nick's milk. Creamy milk is doing a bit of baiting here. here comes it's stun. in range for the stun. Bonk. <laughs> here comes Lena. She's looking for more. Oh, ah! Dan should not be here. So this is how you don't repay the, your hero role, right? As a hero, you got to never die because you are everything for the team right now. So this death is like, if all three of Radiance heroes died but Viper lived, that would be fine. But yeah. Viper dying is disaster. That's bad. Because now your your hero has been nerfed. And other people on Dyer can become the hero themselves. Oh, God. Haste. Prophet is going Maelstrom. He's committing. Oh, fucking Christ. Sure, fuck it, why not? He's basically <laughs> Yatero after all. Man, I love me some Prophet. I wish I could be allowed to last pick my four every game. Like, to just pick the perfect four. Ruin their safe lane. And just have, like, the perfect combination of hero that can just, just fucking <laughs> ruin the enemy team. I would love that so much. Seeing your face on TikTok ads for ESL1 reminded me to drop in on your streams. Oh, shit. You got a big fan in Femboy Booty Blaster. That's good stuff. <laughs> I'll take it. Why I'll, you? I'll take it. Come on. Let me look for ESL. Just try and find me. ESL Gaming. Is there an ad here? Is it under ESL Dota? Oh, Dota isn't gaming, huh? ESL Dota 2. Give me a shot. I don't see my face on these adverts. Going back to last year, I see Eva Elfie smash or pass with 23 Savage. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I don't see it. You want to know something very alarming? Go on, sir. Uh, as of, I believe today, Greg is flying solo on the ESL social media. Oh, really? As, uh, as Axel is going on holiday for a few weeks. 
And so so everything next... that happens on ESL for the next few weeks is Gregory's doing. It's Gregory. Oh, Gregory baby, Thorpe. Gregory Thorpe. So all of the um, Birmingham qualifiers stuff is going to be Gregory hunting Thorpe. And oh, I'm delighted for him, honestly. I mean, I love Greg. He's a top lad. He's a monthling. Oh, hello. Nice. Wallet. Yeah, the way the way Greg put it is all the memes that Munt rejected that he created. <laughs> He's gonna send them out now. <laughs> so do you, do you want to hear a story? Do you want to hear a behind the scenes story about a TI plague? Yeah. So not that long ago, as I as I am wont to do, I was working with a certain basso just yeah. for 42 and months. Could this be? I'm not gonna say Annie when or who on my or screen. where. But there were a number of sketches that were proposed that were essentially collectively rejected. And at the very next event that Slacks went to, where he had free reign, all of those sketches came pouring out. <laughs> <laughs> because the man knows what he wants. And if, if you are a successful person, and Slacks is definitely a successful person, doing what he does, making content the way he wants to, for him to be told, nah, this isn't the one, is re very reasonably, I think. He thinks, well, no, I, I think I do know what I'm doing. And he's right. Oh, this is a nice fight from Radiant. Oh, Larry Lama saves Tommy Eagle's life. No way. That was a way. very nice fight. <laughs> oh, now Evil Teddy's coming to feed as well. Teddy, just this ain't it. You just don't have the deeps yet, Teddy. Creamy Milk also dead. Oh! Five dead for revenge. Five dead. Ugh. I think a part of a very major problem they have right now is they have four heroes building Maelstrom. Yeah. And you can't take fights with four fucking Maelstroms. Well, for PL, mate. For PL. I've, eventually, this will come good, but right now... You can't fucking do this. If you're going four maelstroms, you gotta you gotta t just play the map and farm. Oh shit, Femboy Booty Blaster. <laughs> I worked for DHL at ESL a few years back in Katowice. It was the strangest brand partnership ever, but Slacks absolutely adored the robot delivery truck. I think you mean wasn't it called Effie, the delivery truck? I don't I don't remember those sort of details. I think the truck was called Effie. So the reason Slacks loves anything is because he's like content. And he realized, oh shit, we can do something with this truck. And I remember Birmingham Major, Plague was there. It was the one oh, where yeah. every time someone picked DK, everyone booed. Yep. Um, oh, here we go. See, this is a power nice. bit, that's bit better. Um, every time they picked DK, people booed. Everybody got behind the Brazilian team because they never picked DK. Uh, I think that was the one where VP, this was the first Birmingham Major, I think VP won it and no one was the um, MVP and won the car yes. for the second time. Yes. And the, the second Birmingham Major, I think EG won it. I think. I might be wrong. It might have been some... No, it was Secret. Secret won it. I think EG came second, as is, as was their want at the time. But Secret won it. Radiant's top um, tower is under attack. I still regularly think about Slacks belting that chocolate bar into the back of that lad's head. Eri, I was there. And every time I see Jake, I bring up that video on my phone and play it for him. And I also... This is this is another little bit of behind the scenes for you guys. I know you love this shit. Stockholm Major. I want to say 2022. I think that's when it was. Berlin was 2023. So Stockholm was 2022. Uh, I was hosting. I was backstage. We're watching Slacks' bit on the TV backstage. Because I always watch what Jake's up to. And... He does that bit where he's like throwing things out into the crowd. And he goes, here we go, top rope. Yep. That's the noise he makes. And then he throws the little box, which has several goodies in it. It's much heavier than you think. Hits a fan right in the face. <laughs> and you could only see it from quite far out. And I've, I've laughed and I laughed so hard. I don't think I've ever laughed harder at anything that Slacks has done. And he was like, please stop playing it. I was like, I cannot. I'm doing this, and a member of the ESL stage staff comes to me and says, to German guy, he goes, oh, you think this is amusing? I was like, yeah. He goes, oh, 
I have a even better angle on my phone. And he had recorded on his phone and a different angle, which is closer and even funnier. And he whips this out and Jake is like, what is happening? Why are you guys sharing this? What is going on? Please, I don't want to think about it anymore. That poor guy. And I was watching the second clip on repeat and laughing my ass off. Oh, it was just the best. It was the best. Because as he's throwing it, I'm sat next to Kev and Purge. And Purge is, like me, a relatively cautious man. And we see things like this and we're like, you probably shouldn't do that. Like, he's, he's a generally cautious guy. I remember one time we were hanging out, we were all playing Mafia, and someone had a drink. Like, if I see this, I'm the same. It was like a millimeter from the edge of the table. And Kev's like, should probably move your drink because otherwise you're going to spill it. And they were like, don't be ridiculous. I'm not going to spill my drink. I know exactly where it is. Kev was like, could you just move it like for my sake? And they're like, no, it's fine where it is. They just wouldn't move it like six inches in from the table. A minute goes past. And of course, this person gesticulates, smashes the drink. It goes all over the floor. Uh, and it was a big problem. And Kev was just like shaking his head, looking at this person. Kev is like me. He sees shit like that. And he's like, Please, can you not? Like, there's no logical reason for you to do this. And you may not have noticed it. Here, I've brought it to your attention. I realize you may think I'm a dick for doing so, but I'm just cutting it off at the pass. You could avoid an accident if you just do this one simple thing. And this person refused to do it. Again, I'm not going to say who it was. Nice job, and Kev Alistair. was correct. Non just and it was the same thing months. with Jake no, throwing shit around portion. in the stadium, hoying it out there. And me and Kev look at each other, and I'm like, this is probably a bad idea. He's going to fucking brain someone with this stuff. And we're just shaking our head. And of course, what do you have? What do you know? What happens? He fucking throws something in and brains a fan. And luckily, the fan is a big Slacks fan and just laughs it off. But he could have hit a child in the eye or something ridiculous like that. It could have happened. And that's what made it even funnier to me. Well, you're, uh, you're taking on the role of the uh, crowd reporter. For Birmingham, they, right? that's my job. I cannot wait. So you you can just start fucking targeting people. I'm You're gonna, gonna... find Gotastic and absolutely <laughs> yeet something as well. <laughs> to recreate a wonderful moment from Major's past. Although Birmingham Major is not a major, it's of course just the Birmingham Dota event or whatever it is. I am gonna get Gotastic to stand against a wall and I'm gonna throw DHL boxes at heads of goons. I think that would be a good content piece. How long is it till Birmingham? That's like five weeks, right? Yeah, not long. Fucking hell. Still debating on getting a ticket or not. Get a fucking ticket. Get it. Trust me. It'll be grand crack. It is so much fun. A UK LAN is one of my all-time favorite things is being at a UK LAN. And Birmingham Majors, the Birmingham Majors from years before were fucking fantastic. Because the, the energy is like UK crowd, so it's got a sense of humor. And... Everybody gets drunk, and it's just, it's just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It really is. I, I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm going to be in there, right in the fucking melee, the scrum of fans, sideline reportering. I've already come up with some pieces I want to do. Plague, how do you think about this bit? Okay. Let me know what you think. Uh, football chants, obviously very popular in the UK. Something that yes, we do sir. a lot, nice probably job, up there with the Italians, the Greeks, for 32 months, the French, the Spanish, for SL and dare I say it, the Germans, for getting a good fucking chant going. And as you go around South America, come on, they get all kinds of songs. And we don't have anything like that in Dota other than Let's Go Liquid, which is an American chant, it's not a Dota chant. Because you say that about, they'll just say, Let's Go 
Philadelphia or whatever, let's go Eagles. It's just like, let's go, insert name of team. So what I'm going to do is take some classic British football chants and I'm going to rewrite them for a dope audience. I'm going to hand out lyric That's sheets to sheets. people and oh, we're yeah. going to all get a section of the crowd and we're going to try to get it going to see which section of the crowd does it best. So section A, section B, section C. Section A, let's hear what you've got and I'll get it going. I'll lead the singing and we'll see if we can get some good football chants going in a Dota theme. Well, I, I remember from previous Brums, uh, all that could occur was Oli Oli Oli. Oli 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 Oli. Just right. over and over again. Which was hilarious because it was one of Scotty's mates doing it all the time. I saw him in the pub <laughs> later that evening and his voice was just going, like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, lads, let's go. A great day, you lads. Yeah. He's been all fucking day just chanting that shit to the crowd. Uh, and I respect him for his sacrifice. But that's the UK crowd! Yeah. They're there for the bands. And then where do you see them? Down the spoons. Down the fucking spoons. Yeah. Yeah. The spoons of Birmingham will be infested by Dota fans. So unfortunately, the, we are, the, the venue is not in Birmingham Centre. It's a yeah, different venue. So you have to get back into Brum. So what I intend, our hotel, our hotel, is out by the venue. Oh, is so, it? That's yeah. a shame. Well, it, I was outvoted. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> my, my feeling was, I want to be able to go to the Spoons, and their feeling was, no, we want to be able to just wake up and go to work. Because most of... The, I'm, like, the only Brit other than, like, Alex isn't working the event. No, Alex is working it, yeah. So it's all just a bunch of bloody Yanks and foreigners, isn't it? So they don't they don't want to go to the fucking Spoons and, and get trolleyed after every day, whereas that's my entire power play. He's getting down there. Oh shit, he's in! He's stunned oh, the creep! He's stunned the hell out of that creep! Here comes the Dawnbreaker roll! That was really well played by Slaughter! There's this. There's the. What was that? Swap. Oh shit, they still got them! They still got them! I spank myself, he does perish! They get five! Four! PL, PL left? Did he just TP out? No, he just. He was never there. there. He was never there. Alright, well, that was a successful fight by the Dyer team. Very sleepy period of the game, and then they came back. Well, it's um about oh, Birmingham. I I don't actually know how late the fucking transport goes, but the train. So there are it's... trains. There's a train station at the venue that yeah. goes straight into Central Birmingham. I think Resort World is also like not. I don't know if it's equipped for the the crowd numbers, right? So I think I'm is, sure there, is. is there sufficient spoons in Resort there's, World? For... I believe there is a spoons there. I don't know if it's large enough. Yeah. But what I I mean ideally. The spoons there is large enough to accommodate a thousand people, and I can just drink there and then roll home to my hotel room. That's the idea. Yeah, okay. But there are much better pubs in Brum, so I suspect that what will yeah, happen think... is the event will finish, everyone will go home and get changed, and the brave souls will go out into Brum and go drinking. But the thing is, I'm there for a week, and there's only three days in the arena. So there's like group stages and stuff like that, which obviously none of you will be there for. So yeah. I'm thinking I will just save myself for uh, for the main event. Well, Ruby did invite us to go do some karaoke, but it's just kind of, it's difficult for us people not already at the fucking event. Um, so we're considering our options, but it's looking tough. Interesting. Well, I will, I will, I'll I'll just be headed, I'll head into Brum with everyone else. If the oh, spoons yeah. near the venue is shit, I'll come into Brum. I'll come into spoons. Maybe not every night. As the event goes on, I might get fucking exhausted, but we'll see. Because they are long old days in the arena. Oh, yeah. Because the sideline reporter gonna... is me. It's not, it's not a shift thing. I think it's just me. Oh, shit. I think. I think stage host is Slacks and Tsunami. And I think Silo Reporter is me. So I think it's just me the whole time. You're just on the shift for like 14 <laughs> hours. Month to confirm, but I think that's what it is. Right, well, you are fucked. Ah, <laughs> uh, we'll do it. You gotta do it. Woo! That's a dead dawn. Is that, is it? Is, oh, is Lena, this ain't there? the play. He, she got swapped in, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. It's a bit of a good play from, from Scipio. Scipio matey potato. Uh, are you are you basically are you basically there to speak to the natives because there's no other Brits? So yes. they've got you in as the <laughs> Well T T Gunner is there, but I think he is, is... T there. Well I think so. Munt, is T gonna be there? I thought it was I thought it was I know Gareth's casting. I thought it was Gareth and T Gov casting. Could be wrong. But yes, essentially the I think the panel is gonna be Shiva plus some foreigners. Or Neil plus some foreigners. 
Yeah. Um, and then I will be the lone voice of reason, of course. <laughs> I was going to do uh, a sausage roll taste test where I was going to get people to taste sausage rolls and decide whether they're from Greg's or not. That was going to be one of my one of my tests. Yeah, that's fun. I was going to get some lads and see who can down a pint the quickest and I'd give them yeah, some. Yeah, of course, match. but that, that's always going to lead to one unfortunate clip where someone steps up bravely to give it a go and just can't <laughs> fucking down it. Yeah, but that's content. <laughs> It is content, but you always fear being that lad. You know, maybe it's just an off day or something, but for the rest yeah. of life, you'll be the lad who didn't down the, down the pint. You're going to organise a boat race. What's that? It's uh, where you get a massive line of people. You've got to drink, you got to down a pint one after the other. Oh. First line of people to finish all their pints wins. Then, yes, I will be doing Boat race. I was thinking I might find people who've got talents that they can do. Like anything, could be someone that could do a backflip, could be someone that could like double jointed and could turn their arms around anything. Do a good impression, something like that. Get a talent contest going, all that kind of shit. Yeah, that'd be fun. Just anything that involves getting the fans involved and having a laugh is is the whole the whole crux of it for me. I know T, T was prowling around uh, Meltdown for the ESL final. I was just like, if Ted's on, if Ted's on the panel, I'm happy to do an interview. But you were, you you weren't you weren't doing that, no, that shift uh, so lately. So. I, I was on the panel when T was there at Meltdown, but yeah. we lost contact with him. This is a this terrible is... fight for Dyer. Evil Teddy. It's a bit yeah, of a it's... crazy Monkey King ulti though. Tom turning that around. Yeah, that's, that's something. That's a, a three for two profit buyback. He's coming in. They did Lovely get the video. Is, is Vidicus is not the carry, is he, or is he the carry? He, he is, is the, the boss one. Yeah. Okay, I take it back. Carry monkey. Yeah, so monkey's a little, a little bit back. Not like it can be picked every game back, but that people aren't going um, Echo Saber anymore. So Echo Saber's out, and they just they just rush Gleipnir. And when you have Gleipnir BKB, you can just run around the map and kill pretty much any hero. If we can get a Dotes band going like the England band, I will be a very happy man. We get Sweet I mean, Caroline, you... Sweet Shopify, da, <laughs> da, da, something like that. Warriors of the wood. Always losing every lane. <laughs> oh, I see, I can't wait. I think it's going to be fucking great. <laughs> the... the... The great hurrah of UK Dokes finally returning. Man says, most well attended event in the EU since 2019. So there you go. Hell yeah. I mean, UK fans, we are starved of uh, Dotes. There are a lot of UK Dota players. We just want to see some fucking Dotes. We fucking love it. And you know it's going to be bans. Birmingham is easy to get to for everyone. Job fucking done. When me and Alex put out our, uh, our Dota 2 guide part 2, which I this should be within mm, next week or so. just resubbed for 80 months. E e a k k 80 months. Wow. Do you? I can't. How, how much were TI tickets last year? Do you remember? I've no idea. I've n I mean, no. I've, I've never had to buy them, so I. I no, that's uh, very true. I don't know. I'm, I apologize. Someone. Uh, who is anyone in the chat went to TI? How much was the um? How much were the tickets? Ari didn't qualify. I know UK Dota was only hope. Yeah, that's a bloody shame. Hopefully, because yeah, Ari, there. Is, Ari seems like a fucking lovely lad as well. Whenever he's, he's on the interviews, he's so articulate and yeah, happy he's to very answer articulate. questions. Sorry, so what is his accent? Oh God, I have to go listen to it again. It's a little bit odd. Like um, it, I, I suspect that he spent some time outside the UK when he was young. Yeah, I think that's almost guaranteed. I, I hope he's at Brum because I'd love to chat to him as the UK's only representative, and in classic UK Dota style, he didn't qualify for the event. Uh, I would like to know, what's that accent about? Because I know quite a few young kids these days, and he's young, uh, have unusual accents because they're like influenced by YouTube. Oh dear. Where is the... Uh... Donald coming in, baby. Blip, blip, blip. There goes your initiation. There's the swap to try to save Viper. Meanwhile, PL going in. They're going to get a kill on the Hoodwing. Hoodwing down. Petty Axman gets a good monkey out of He's doing some fucking work. PL able to get out. Yes. Dude, there is no carry more exciting than oh, fucking shit. monkey king. 
Evil Teddy in! Clicks a creep! Oh, no, they get the kill! A good MKL jumps in. Fucking what a baller. He's hunting. He cannot find. $800, $800 for the weekend, TI weekend. 800 bucks. That's a lot of, that's a lot of fucking money. Mate, you've got to go. Yeah, I'm, of course I'm going to go, but I'm, that's, uh, because the most recent one I was going to go to was, um, fucking Romanian one. Oh, no. Uh, and you were going to, you were going to sneak me in and get me a ticket, so I didn't have to pay for one. And then it got, the crowd got bloody cancelled. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. I know. I know. Well, look, honestly, Copenhagen will be fucking amazing. Yeah, I, I'm sure it will. They're on the hunt here for Evil Teddy. I think they've... I think it's just Eagle hunting. He's just he's just collecting cash right now. Keep chucking fucking shurikens, Eagle. Farm that money, hell yeah. I think this Ags is uh, fucking awful, by the way. I just want to the register that right now. Toss. Yeah, just, just build fucking Boots of Bearing or something, you know? It would be so much more useful to your team. Um, or like a Lotus against this Slada would be impeccable, but well, no, they're, they're seduced by gold. the... They're seduced by doing like 250 damage <laughs> every couple of <laughs> seconds, you know? It's so, it's so ignorable. Dino Main says, will there be a Copenhagen Dota event? Uh, the International this year is gonna be in Copenhagen. Uh, so yes, September. if if you like so Dota and you want to see a, the International, the, the biggest Dota event every year copenhagen is the place ashwin busy uh quote unquote at work which oddly enough schmoozing people and drinking with them and getting to know them is work in certain jobs you can expand it so um i think so my eldest doesn't have a typical london accent my youngest does but my eldest has one that's kind of informed by, like, YouTube and shit like that. You know what I mean? So... Oh, dear. Still mean you might be in trouble. Imagine if you had Boots of Bear in here, Blake. He'd be jogging away, but it's cracked. He's dead. Oh, oh Skippy O'Hell, fucking... enjoy ya! This is that's ages, though! Swoop. Dan is in grave peril. Viticus is in trouble. That's only ages. Okay, they got the ages. Oh, that... they got the ages, that but that's it. That has to be considered sufficient. I don't think that's good. It's not good, but that's more than I expected when they took that fight, to be honest. Actually, B is, as he put it, hammered. Yeah. He said RL we were, when with... you're back. What's RL? Rocket League. Oh. We were out um, last Thursday. We I know, some yeah. of the lads. Um, we finished it. I don't know why but we finished it off with a round of tequila shots. And just <laughs> walked home afterwards. And me and Ashton were fucking struggling. <laughs> He messaged, what, he messaged me on the train like, I've never been this hammered in years. So I think if I was going to diagnose the current issues with Radiant, it's they're, they're tremendously lacking some BKBs. Mm. Uh, and once MK ult goes down, they can't fight, and in the runaway, because they don't have BKBs, they're getting caught by a Gleipnir from Evil Teddy, or a random stun from Ice Bank myself, and they're struggling. Scottish says, I think a lot of it is from conversations with people outside the area. Sounds dumb, but I basically trained myself to not have a southern accent, because my friends couldn't understand me. But the southern accent of all the UK accents is the most understandable if you're talking southeast. Like, if you had, like, Oh, you don't move, my lover, I, I hope you I thought you were going to gank top. Yeah, I understand people having a pop, because you've got a strong West Country accent, but if you sound like someone like me, who's just from the South, or Plague, who's just from London, it's not, like, a difficult accent to understand. It's, like, default English accent. That's why anytime anyone does an English accent, they do that accent. They don't do a Scouse accent or a Mank accent. Pub with yous next. Absolutely, mate. I'm down. Hell yeah. This is actually a closer game than I thought it would oh. be. <laughs> He's talking about Southern USA. Sorry, my name is misleading. Says Scottish 1900. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> what are you chatting? This is a UK chat. We're just talking UK dotes. He comes in with the South. Oh, I meant the, U the US South. No one cares! Oh shit, they think they've got him! It's an illusion. Well done, lads, you got 34 quid. 
<laughs> fucking Americans. Right. No offense, mate, but fucking Americans. You lot think you're the center of the bloody universe. Talk about the South, they automatically assume you mean the American South, even though no one in this chat has a UK has an American accent. We've all got UK accents. Oh, an Americans. Your country is very big, but there are others. You don't like Bloodfin on PL? I don't know about that. Swings and roundabouts. Um, he needs some. He needs some fucking damage pretty desperately. But he also needs a team that doesn't die within half a second. So he could go Eternal Shroud because they have a lot of magic damage and it'd be very helpful against it, uh, make him very tanky. But I don't. I don't object to a Bloodthorn. Something you can just chuck out there yeah. along with your Q. Um, I mean, if they've got dispels for the bounty stuff, they haven't used it on one or the other, aren't they? Yeah. Like, if you're saying I've got a counter to your one spell that can be counted this way and that's the most important one then fair enough but imagine if you have three spells you need to counter all three of them it's going to be difficult i uh you know talking about this uh, american uk thing ah. we were doing a new york times crossword and one of the the clues was uh what where would a londoner be from or what would a londoner be called and the answer was Ontarians, because they're talking about London, Ontario. And I was Fuck like, you off. fucking bastards. Fuck off. And I'm sure they, they did it as a trick, but there was some part of me was like, no, you just did that because more Americans would know London, Ontario than... But, there, but there's an Ontario in LA. Yeah. Like, when I flew to uh, a summit one time, they said, you're going to be flying into Ontario Airport. I was like, what? Is it in Canada? They were like, no, Ontario. I was like, yeah. They're like, yeah, it's an inland empire. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? It was at Ontario Airport, California. Like, it's, it's, it would be like me saying, I'll see you in York and talking to, oh, I mean New York. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, don't, you know, just fucking, this is why when they say Paris, Texas or whatever, that's, they have to do it. Because in America, there, there are like five places called everything. Like, you think of, oh, I'll see you in fucking Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee or... Memphis fucking Oklahoma or Memphis, Texas or Memphis, Oregon. Like, the, it, it, I don't blame them for doing it. Invisibility. It does annoy me when you see Paris with the Eiffel Tower and they're like, Paris, France. It's like, yeah, I wasn't going to make that mistake, but... BAM! Stunned. They are finding these illusions. Matey should get an axe. He's working on it. Well, we said this is going to be a long one, and it is. Yeah, Radiant are, are beginning to impose their misery upon the game. Just because they can never win a team fight doesn't mean they can't make you fucking suffer. Oh, oh, oh. Hello? Oh! Oh, so quick fingered. Very nice. Very nice. They're trying to kind of wrap on them here. Squelchy's, Squelchy's looking pretty aggy. Dornold comes in. They're gonna pick up the Prophet. Look at these go. Oh shit, they're doing the business now. He's got Satanic. Oh, He's not popped in. Oh, Very good to the he, it's not he, he, got, he got the swap off. Dawn is dead. Can they fight the rest of them? I think they can. Evil Teddy is trying to fight Action Dan. This doesn't end well. Creamy Milk comes in. Someone gonna kill Creamy Milk? He <laughs> gets this. It's a five for three. Dan is, is terrifying. What's the yeah, what, I mean, PL just, PL just fucking went ham. Yeah. I was not expecting that. I think Monkey King was really late on popping his buttons, mm. uh, and when when he had Satanic up, he didn't use his Q or something. There, there's a world in which he gets a full massive heal off and it goes, felt like and goes it. for it. It felt like it. But I think it was also a little bit uh, Viper Strike is on him. So yeah, broken, so he, he doesn't get, get the heal, deal. right? Yeah. He does have Satanic, though, so... I'm just surprised he went down that quickly. I thought he'd be way tankier. Yeah, he's in his ulti as well. He dropped very quickly. Oh, he popped it late, I feel. Yeah, there, there was there was something where he like didn't be give you a stun he should have or something like that. Either way, a lovely fight because that is done with a BKB finish now. So next fight should be even easier. A Brit complaining about someone else thinking they are the center of the universe is pretty rich. In what way? I will say this. Uh, this blew my mind. I, I, I have a friend from um, Isle of Wight, and she's always talking about the mainland. I'm like, I, I'm <laughs> not comfortable being a mainland, you know. 
You're yeah, the island. You're not. You're not allowed to call me the main. Yeah. She's an islander. Yeah. So you're mainlanders. That's it. That's yeah, but like, I don't feel like I could be a mainlander. You are something a being a mainlander. Just I don't know why it fucked my brain up because obviously it, it's not actually a big deal. It's like what? What the fuck do you mean I'm a mainlander? You're only a mainlander to people on the island. I know. Uh, do you genuinely think that people in Britain think they're, they're the centre of the universe? Are you thinking of us in like the 19th century? Are you thinking of us now? Like. I would like to know why you think that British people think they're the centre of the universe and you're an American. Like, I find that pretty fucking hilarious, in all honesty. Give me some examples. Uh, potential fight brewing here. Is the glide near? Harold Hell dive. Turns around and does absolutely nada. How come that didn't work? Uh, oh! was this is this is more like a fight that died. They got two. Take. They're just being. They do a buyback on Dawn. This is. They are. They're evacuating. Okay. Goodbye, Dan. Been a pleasure. I think you probably really have to BKB that if you're going to try and TP there. Yeah. Oh, there goes Roche. And it's the Bianna. The all important banner. Britain is the center of what? World maps to avoid slicing up into icons to make another country in the middle. I don't know if that's true. I just think that. You've got to remember that when a lot of those maps were made, we were the most important power in the world. Like, it's just kind of the way it is. We just were. Also, I would suggest to all of you, and I think this is reasonable, that the different, the, the, the Atlantic Ocean being the shortest ocean, like if you're going to center on the Pacific, you're not going to see shit. Because it's like half the fucking planet is water. If you look at it from that perspective, 70% of the planet is water, but a lot of it is above or below the two major land masses. And then you've got the Pacific, which is like half of all the fucking water. So, of course, a map is going to focus on the Atlantic. And we're not deliberately centering ourselves. We just happen to be the ones who made the maps. And as it so happens, stuff to the left fits in and stuff to the right fits in. What, do you want the water to be in the center? Makes no sense. Don't make any sense at all. So you find me a map with a center on uh, Hawaii and tell me how that map looks. Oh, he died. And they baited Petty Jacobson in pretty well. They got three buybacks here. This uh, this monkey should be really fucking scared right now. He has no BKB, no standing on respawn. He's fucked. Oh, shit, they got him. This is a disaster. Can you get the hop away? Nope. And they're away. They did get our tier three. Worth. Worth. So did they get any buybacks from important heroes? Yes, they got. Actually, uh, they got Reg's buyback. America. That's important-ish. Bariff Klondike says, "As a USA'er, I'm too self-centered to notice anybody else being self-centered." <laughs> But I assume they must be. That's a very funny comment. I like that. Like, if people want to complain, but it just so happened that at the time we came up with shit like Maps of the World and GMT, we were the big dogs. I mean, you're all in this chat speaking English for a reason. It's just the way it turned out. Now, if you want, we can constantly say, oh, the map should be centered on you know, this, that, or the other, but it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And we can say all the shit we did wrong and all the rest of it, but at the same time, we could also just say, hey, let's all go to the pub, and let's all go to the Birmingham fucking Dota event, and let's have a good crack, and that's the end of it. You don't need to, you don't need to decide who's best. The only people saying England is quote-unquote the best are twats. Why are you listening to them? We're just trying to get by like everyone else. The, the maps and everything and the language and everything is just because we were the big dogs at the time. Middle tower if you give it a thousand years, no one will be fucking speaking English. 
Dyer's top tower is under attack. I mean, the Romans. I'm sure loads of fucking lads were speaking Latin back in the day. 2,000 years ago. I'm sure Latin was a big fucking deal. I'm sure of it. What are you going to do? You're going to go march on fucking Rome? How dare you? No, these things change. Everything passes. Egyptians were a big deal back in the day. Where are they now? They're nowhere. It's fucking Egypt. It's a tiny country that doesn't out. So, you know, we've had our day and we're going to lose our day. It's not like a game of Civ where you just tech up and go for a culture victory and win the game. It just goes down and then it comes back up again. Just give it a thousand years. You won't be here. It doesn't matter. You just have to hope that people still are. Hopefully, we've got some kind of Star Trek Next Generation style. Everybody's just chill and exploring space. That'd be hype. How is this mold? Jeff, you seem to be the one that's molding, bud. You can't even spell Jeff. Joff. If you are the big deal, you have to accept that people are going to call you a twat because of it. Believe me, I'm used to it. Every single event I go to, I'm the only English guy there. And every single person has a beef with England. Reasonably so. Just gotta fucking suck it up. The good good games we had a stomp, and now we're into a genuinely tense game. Yeah, this is a this is a fantastic game. I mean, Dyer very excited by winning a Roche. Uh, kind of blew their load a bit too a bit too hot and heavy. You know, they didn't take their time blowing their load. Um, they've now fucked their lead away completely, and now they can't do anything right because they were like, all right, when we get this Roche, we'll go high ground and we'll win the game. And now they have no Roche and they have no other plan. And now they're this being is something. The epic smoke gag. They have no vision for this. They have no idea where they are. They're just gonna find evil Teddy for no fucking reason. Why? Why would this ever work? Oh, they miss him. My time. Oh my no. god. So close. And now Dyer are set up. They're aware some shit is going down. And now they've got the vision. Dyer is saw PL. Sees where Viper is. Can't jump him. What I'm saying is, if you're having a pop at people who think England number one, you're literally having a pop at the idiots in a country. And every single country has idiots in it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, I met an English bloke who was a complete prick. I'm sure you did. I've met people from every fucking country imaginable. I've met great people from those countries and twats from those countries. Because people are people. And you're going to get shits and you're going to get good people everywhere. Anyone that tells you England is the greatest country in the world is a complete bellend. There is no greatest country in the world. It's all relative. And those people don't really love their country. They love their bit of it. That's what people forget. People like their little corner of a, of a place. Oh shit, Eagle is in here. This is just a, Somehow this is gonna fucking work. <laughs> about that? Satanic popped. Uh, Evil Teddy swapped. Dies. Monkey ult is down. They're looking for Dan. Dan's gonna give it the walk away. Whew! But they can't get him. There's the crush. Uh, Doesn't do anything. Oh, that's lovely Dan stuff. Dan is away. Squelchy is also away. Squelchy should be able to Why the fuck here. is Dan? What has he got there? He's got the fucking feather! Squelchy turns it around, they get a kill! They're gonna get the slot on too! Holy god! Prophet remains! Where's Hoodwing? Hood snap, run into the hill, she's trapped. Can she get away? Here comes the hammer. There's some gods, there's another swap! What is a cooldown on this shit? 30 seconds. There is something uh, missing from this Monkey King's inventory. I think it's an agility item, because he's getting shredded by these illusions. He needs like a butterfly or an AC or something to get some armor. And maybe there's a hope, but... I'm starting every single fight with... Someone getting picked off is also 
really stinting Dyer's gameplay. I, I think they can force buybacks, but both teams are basically just in a cycle of force buybacks, back off, everybody has buybacks. Yeah. Also approaching the terrifying Viper 25, which is genuinely game changing with becoming universal. Oh shit. He doesn't have the shard. No, it doesn't, but. <laughs> which is really Honestly, good. The shard is very good, but I oh, don't think shit. this rifle was ever expected to hit high. Oh ground. shit! Cool. That's a dieback, oh. but it's only on profit. I will say, Matey and Eagle are playing. Out Ma of their Matey is minds. playing fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I was, I was prepared to hate on this bounty hunter, but Eagle has done a good job of finding everything. Yeah, he's got twenty six assists, dude. Yeah, he's doing well. And look at his money. Look at his inventory. Ags, Elade, Wind Waker. He's actually without nullifier. This guy's actually unkillable. I like to see Eagle now that he has been foisted on non-core roles, uh, making the most- Oh my god! Matey's so beast! Matey's just crushing them. Matey is kicking their fucking asses. Petty Yapsen in trouble, he's you trying to get, fight them all! Better. He you can't get fight them! Down. He didn't get the ult off! Now they're gonna get Slaughter too! Buyback on Monkey King! How? Have Radiant won the game with this boring ass winning draft, one might ask. By waiting for 51 minutes. That's a nice stun, but Evil Teddy, they do get the kill on the and door breaker. Can they, they get, get Can they get more? Can they get more? Viper does go down! Squelchy also in oh, trouble! Squelchy goes down! They get four! Stormy Eagle is the only survivor. Oh my god, they're gonna kill Slaughter. <laughs> they're just trying to kill this fucking illusion. They cannot kill Prophet. I don't. They no, then they cannot there's kill no, Bounty. There's no point chasing Bounty. You have no vision, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Why bother? Well, they didn't get the melee racks, so there is reason to be hopeful for Dyer, but. What a fight! It is. It's. You see how impressive MKUlt is? Which is why it's like. If that shit is down, he can actually just 1v4 fight yeah, them. Yeah. Even if they're all hitting him with that and Satanic Pops, he can fucking take him. Just he's, he's always getting like two of the three things off that he needs to pop, yeah. and never the third. Harry, we don't ask questions like that. Yeah, no, we don't. <laughs> it's impossible to explain why chasing a Vengeloos and a Bounty was so important to them that they get nothing from this <laughs> epic fight win, but I trust them, you know? Steam just went down? Well, someone got DC'd. Yeah, it is Tuesday night. Yeah. I think private lobbies still work now. I don't think dotes is that effective generally, but uh, June two. Yes. We only got a little bit of time to talk about it. Let's talk about it some more. So. Okay. Um, I want to ask you a few questions. This is as someone who's read the book multiple times and loved the first film. I'd be interested in your take. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like, because Charney in the book and in the first film is nowhere near as big a character as she was in Denis Villeneuve's version, where she is almost like the audience voice of reason, where she's basically saying, uh, this is wrong. Because essentially, in the book, from what I remember, and certainly in the original film, um, there's no spoilers, Eri, because it's June. I mean... It's not a surprise, is it? It's, it's, it's like a 70-year-old book at this point. For sure, whatever, 60-year-old book. Um, just, just tune out, bub. Um, so, Paul becomes a Kwisatz Haderach. My question to mm -hmm. you is, and this is something I was chatting about with Mrs. F the other day, and watching the film, obviously it's a different take on it, uh, is, first of all, do you think the Kwisatz Haderach is a real thing? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Well, 
I believe the Bene Gesserit are create were you know their whole bloodline thing was to create someone because they can only see the past, right? That's their their gimmick. They can right. look backwards in time, uh, and every other guy who who tries dies, but they know a, a guy with the right bloodline can see forwards in time as well. So that's their whole point. But I don't think the the specific like prophecies of of Dune were real. No. So the Missionara Protectiva, which is the the whole Bene Gesserit, it's not even the central plan. Like it's separate from the whole Kwisatz Haderach thing. The Missionara Protectiva was um, that essentially they seeded all of these prophet and you know the voice from the outer world and all this kind of stuff on all these different worlds so that if you were ever fucked like stranded you could just play into that and say pull off some tricks and they'd say oh the prophecy and rely on that so the reason that charney is so reluctant to join in with paul is because she openly voices something that as a reader of the book now you realize that's fucked up like they're literally using the native populations forging a religion in their minds waiting for this messiah and then if you happen to need religion when you're on that planet yeah sure you can just become uh, a part of the prophecy so the Kwisatz Hanarak is subtly different because as you say it relies on a man who can drink the water of life survive and then essentially see the future and become the bloodline that the Bene Gesserit can then control that's the key difference is that he was born a generation early he was meant to be the next generation they were going to get a Bene Gesserit woman to have a son that was going to be the, the, the Kwisatz Haderach Jessica had a son a generation earlier and they were like you were told to bear only daughters because the problem is as soon as a Bene Gesserit has a son the clock is ticking could this guy because he's going to have Bene Gesserit training and Bene Gesserit powers could this guy be the Kwisatz Haderach and will he be ours to control? That's the key. So yeah. Paul is clearly not theirs to control. He's off on his own. But in a weird way, they knew this was going to happen and bringing about the downfall of the Emperor has always been the Bene Gesserit plan because they're the power behind the throne. Because remember, there's that moment at the end of the film when Jessica says, you picked the wrong side and the Reverend Mother Helen Gaius Mahim says, sides? Come on, you know better than that. Because there is no side. There's only the Bene Gesserit and anything they allow to happen. So I thought that was really, really interesting. That at the end of the film, like you pointed out, which was something I hadn't noticed, was that as soon as Paul drinks the water of life, we don't see Paul's perspective anymore. He's We're bystanders. Yeah. And he's now this guy off doing Paul Atreides things. And Kwisatz Haderach things. But essentially, he goes into that room and he calls out this lad's history and calls out this lad's history and he knows all this stuff but when he drinks the water of life and allow, allows him to see the future my question is because of his Bene Gesserit training and stuff is he is it like a mind trick like how is he able to know this stuff there's no real reason for him to know these things it could just be that you know he just sort of uh like I've seen cold reading done by psychics before it was he doing a cold reading on the guy who's just really good at it like can he actually read minds? Like, if so... I think the the eugenics shit is actually real, and he can actually, like, read minds and mm. see the future. I think it, it, that is genuinely real. But I do think, like, the book to... The, like, the film is much more personal, right? Like, it's about, like, the revenge and stuff like that, and the, like, wider themes that the book looks at is sometimes missing. And I think that's sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing. The, like the spacing guild as the sort of foil to the Bene Gesserits yeah. is completely missing right you never because what from the film it makes no sense that these all powerful witch women who can control people with their voice and speak through <laughs> speak through minds they could just do whatever the fuck they want but in the books they can't because the spacing guild is the opposite to them and is as powerful yeah 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 um well, yeah, that, that so is something they missed. Like, I, I certainly those, like, felt big grand stuff is missing but yeah. I like I like the personal like focus on they're just I, the people agree. and not the, the, yeah, the grand shit. Because the, the real story is the Fremen. Like, that's the yeah. story. Like, the Fremen and Stilgar and Charney and Paul. That is the story. The politics, the rest of it, is not as interesting. And I think that if you had focused more on the politics in that movie, you lose some of the personality. Because when he's fighting Fade Rauther at the end of the film, 
I know how that turns out, but I didn't know if he had changed the ending. Because I'd read something saying, I just saw the headline and thought, I don't want to know. And the headline yeah. said, they changed the ending of Dune, and here's why that matters. And in the original film and in the book, Charlie doesn't ride off into the sunset and ditch Paul. She is by his side throughout. And she's like his yeah, loyal... she's fully on board. Yeah, and when he's like, I'm going to marry Princess Irulan and, uh, and basically become emperor, she's like, cool, whatever you need to do. I'm your princess, whatever. Yeah, go for I'll it. I'll your concubine. <laughs> Whereas in the book, in the film, she's like, this is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. You're going to cost billions of lives because it's going to be a, a fucking... Not, not just like a, a global war, but a universal war because you can travel anywhere in space instantaneously. So the universe has been colonized. And now he's going to be emperor of the known universe. And with, and not just as like the emperor in a reasonable way, but the emperor as a supremely religious figure, which is genuinely terrifying. And you've already had jihads in the past. The Butlerian jihad, I think they mentioned it in the film. I can't remember. Is the reason that there's no machines and computers in the film? It's set in the year ten one ninety one. That was a detail. Princess Irulan announces the date when she's recording her diary. Yes. And it's 10, so it's like 8,000 years in the future. <clears throat> where the fuck are the robots? Where are the computers? There was a big, the Butlerian Jihad, where people rose up, killed all the computers because they were fucking up and taking over their jobs, presumably. And they were like, you know, I'm sure we'll have something like that in our timeline. Maybe not when we're alive, but essentially computers taken over, people will say, fuck this, and destroy all the computers and say, no more fucking computers. That'll happen. That will happen at some point because replacing people with machines is not something people, human beings are ready for. Probably will ever be ready for. So Dune should have been robots fighting robots and who has the best robots. But that makes a terrible story. So you have a decent explanation for why um, there's no fucking computers and the Mentats are, are human computers. That's yeah. Pyre DeVries and Thufa Hawak are human computers because they close their eyes and they just add up real quick. Because you can't have some spice. Yeah, exactly. You got to have the spice. So the spacing guild, obviously, the only ones who can fold space and move between two places, is super fucking important. And like you said, they are as powerful as the Bene Gesserit, but they're in the foreground. Oh they, my fucking god! They, they, they have a background. They have a background where they're like, you know, there's plots and things. But the Bene Gesserit don't think, as they said, we don't think in terms of lives. We think in terms of like a thousand years. Because I die and my memories pass to the next Bene Gesserit, who becomes Reverend Mother. So we don't lose any information or any plot or anything. It's all perfectly fucking preserved. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. Mm. I do. I. I. There, there was like, there's something Ashens and Asher and Arca asked because they're more perspective people than I am, uh, and I just kind of, I've, I had like a pizza in a movie theater. I'm always going to enjoy the movie. Yeah. You know? I'm not a big critic. Um, but they were like, why? Why, when they have these guns that seem to be really fucking good, do they always just go for the, the go for the swords? It's rule of cool. That's why they do it. No, it, no, it it's not. Funny. It's not. So in the book, they explain this better. I don't, I don't know if I told you about this actually. The the whole um, lasers and shields interaction. Yeah. So in the book, they explain it as if a laser hits a shield, there's an atomic explosion, and because of the nature of the, I think it's called like the Schwarzfeld field or something like that. If the shield and the laser, if the laser beam hits a shield, the shield might blow up, the gun might blow up, or both might blow up. So you right. cannot fire lasers. The reason they can fire lasers at the much bigger uh, sand crawlers and stuff like that out in the desert, and again, they didn't say this in the movie, which is a shame because people reasonably would ask this question. If you use a shield in the desert, it will attract fucking sandworms like nothing else. They will drive yeah. them into a frenzy. So you cannot use shields in the desert. And if someone shoots a laser at your shield, you might both blow up. So that lasers... Makes so much sense. It does. But they never explain it. So when they're like... When Gurney Halleck is like, we found the family supply of atomics, you might reasonably say, hang on, I just saw you blow up things with a laser that pierces them. Like, yeah. just annihilate shit. Just use that. You can't because they have shields at their base and shields around their fucking ships and all the rest of it. So you cannot use shields. You have to go in. And because everyone's using shields, any attempt to just shoot people, like if you use projectile weapons, remember, 
They're fast, and only the slow blade penetrates the shield. So a projectile with traditional guns and weapons bounce off the shield. It's got to be slow, which is why they have those special guns where it slows down and drills its way through the shield. You need yeah. to have that. But the lasers and shields, I don't know if they ever mentioned it in the movies. I'm hoping, because I'm a huge fan of both movies, the second in particular, the second was exceptional, that there's a Denny Villeneuve cut that's an hour longer in yeah, each film. I, I would love that. Uh, I, I'm considering going back and seeing it in cinema again, because I loved it so much. And I would, I would get a... I would buy a sort of longer Villeneuve cut in a heartbeat. Because I've heard of some of the scenes that were cut. You know, a lot of the Mentat stuff, there was, oh. they, they filmed and they got rid of it just for time purposes. And... So, Thufa Hawat was one of my favourite characters in the book. And he actually suspects Jessica of being a Harkonnen spy. Of course, little yeah. do we know on first reading that she is literally a Harkonnen, but not a spy. Um, he suspects her of that. Oh, shit! They got Evil Teddy swapped in! May's gonna pay the price, but he's gonna come back. Monkey Old goes down. They're gonna back it up here. Action Dan has to back it up. Who's this that's stunned? It's Squelchy P. Oh, can't do anything. He's stopped forever. Guess the swap ain't is there. He's there. He lives. Harold is doing some work. They're gonna back it up. Oh, they've lost. They've lost him. They've lost Slava. Can they do more? Petty Axon. The ult has run out. He got some life still off. He's gonna go down. He goes down. That's the ages. They get another swap off. That's four dead. They've only lost a bench. These are all diebacks. And there goes Vinicus. Vinicus is down. Can they get more? They got the track on Creamy Milk. They get a stun on him. There's a slow Vipers on his ass. He's dead. Four why? diebacks, play. Why risk it when you have no buybacks? Why, why, why? Because they seconds. are tired. Okay, they, they will they will all be up in a couple of seconds. It's not that big a risk. Fuck me. Apart from Larold Lama, who just doesn't straight up doesn't fucking have it. What a legend. <laughs> so there, there are a couple of things in the book that didn't make it to the film. One of them is... Um, do you remember Lady Fenring in the second film? She goes to see Fade Rowther and ends up getting yeah, pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Um, she and her family, I think the house that they're in has a party. There's like a dinner party at House of Trades. Oh, they've all got buybacks suddenly. Yeah, yeah, it was only on cooldown for a couple of seconds. Oh, shit. Um, so I'm pretty sure there's like a dinner party scene where essentially there's a lot of spy shit happening and Paul sort of, oh my god, they are taking me so quickly. They're, they're comboing between the bounty and the bench so well. They Every single really fight, good. they just track someone and swap them in. But this Why time it backfires. Creamy Milk. Creamy Milk survived. He does. Um, so that dinner party scene is quite important um, and isn't really covered. I, I feel like the initial build up to the betrayal is a little truncated in the first film, as much as I liked yeah. it, is the the build up to it. Why is Dr. Yui betraying uh, the House of Trades? Why is Tufa Hawat so important? Um, he has like three lines and, and then he's out of the movie. Why is Peter DeVries, who's the, do you remember? He was played, um, I can't remember the name of the actor. In the, do you know the scene in the first film where Baron Harkonnen gets poisoned? He's the first yeah. guy that dies. He grabs his throat and falls over. He's like the guy that goes to see the Saudi car. Yeah, he's the he's the mentat for Harkonnen. Right? Exactly. So he's Baron Vladimir Harkonnen's mentat. We don't get more than like three lines out of him. So him and Thufa Hawat are like the brains of both operations. He's like the brains for Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. He's like the guy who comes up with the plans. And uh, Thufa Hawat is like the key to the Atreides sort of spy ring. And we barely get to see them. And the only thing I like is he's like, I failed you, you uh, my duke. I hand in my resignation. I want to see like another 20 minutes of Tufa Hawa. Because he is a very important character. In the in the David Lynch movie. Oh my Should god! Killing people. There's a fight happening. They just killed Lynch. <laughs> is the swap available? No. Teamwork Tratino Basso is Tratino so Basso for Tratino film, Basso. He ends up si, 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 in the employee of the Harkonnens. For I can't 67 remember if that's months. in the book. Flux, would you like to see my petition to have Dennis Villeneuve direct every movie <laughs> right up until God Emperor, at which point we bring back David Lynch for warm lectures, learn about Rel John for six hours. Uh, teamwork is for sissies. I think Dennis Villeneuve is probably the one director now who, whatever film he puts out, I will go see it. Like, I loved Arrival, I loved both Dunes. What else has yeah. he done? I, I, I think he's he's probably one of the best directors around at the moment, if not the best. Let's have a look at his, his filmmaking career. 
So, I love June and June Part 2. Blade Runner 2049 was really good. Arrival was amazing. Enemy was good, but very okay. strange. If you haven't seen that film, that is a strange fucking movie. The ending of that movie is utterly bizarre. So, I think he's brilliant. Very inventive. Another swap in Matey for Matey is MVP. <laughs> he's crushing them. I have a swap. Uh, I kind of swap. Uh, you know that's what they you are... say. They are not holding this. They no, will they've lost. try their best. They've lost the game. It's just illusions. That was just illusions. PL didn't even hit him once. Wow. I did see poor things and I despised it. Which is rare. I've, I've been on a run of movies lately where I was like, there are no bad movies. Like, I watched The Holdovers last night. That was brilliant. Anatomy of a Fall, brilliant. June Part 2 was brilliant. There are others. I can't even remember them in the heat of the moment. But I, I'm like loving films at the moment. There are so many good movies. Um, so yeah, I saw Poor Things. I was happy to see it. And then I started watching it and I was horrified. I hated it. I hated it. I loved American Fiction. I watched that last week, Matt. I thought that was brilliant. Like, I, I literally, in the last month or so, I've seen four brilliant films. I did watch Masters of the Air. I thought it picked up as it went on. Loved it by the end. Not as good as Band of Brothers. I don't think it's as good as Band of Brothers, but a very, very good TV series. Uh, what did I hear about Poor Things? Everything. Everything. I hated how... On the nose, all the symbology was. I hated the fact that uh, she started off doing what, and you'll forgive my language here, um, they said in uh, Tropic Thunder, you never go full retard. That's what she did in the first hour of that movie. Uh, I thought it was massive Oscar bait. I thought that all the accents were dreadful. I didn't understand why it was sometimes in black and white, sometimes a fisheye lens, sometimes not. I did not understand any of the decisions made in that film. Uh, it was like in a weird fantasy world. Um, I, I think, from my perspective, the film was about female empowerment, but I never felt that she was empowered. I thought it was abysmal, absolutely abysmal. Um, and I thought that it was, uh, really had some very, a very seedy side to it if you looked closely. I absolutely fucking hated it. Uh, and if I hadn't been there with Mrs. F, I would have walked out. But she said, she turned to me 10 minutes in and said, you're not enjoying this, are you? I said, oh, I'll give it a chance. And then after an hour, she could tell. Just, I wasn't even doing anything. I was just sitting still. And she was, she looked, turned to me and said, you're not enjoying this. You, you don't think that's Oscar bait? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. Absolutely out of your mind. Did you see how many awards it was up for, bud? The Oscars is not what it used to be. Now they'll fucking vote for actual good movies sometimes. We can, can wait seven, seven minutes. minutes. Yeah, we can wait. Alright, we'll hold. I want to see Drunk Ashy B. So, it's supposed to be X is the one defense I've heard of poor things from everyone I know who loved it. Listen, if you really enjoy a film, and I don't, I am never going to question that. If you're asking for my opinion, I'll tell you what I think. And I think that's fair. If you're asking, did you like so-and-so, I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to say, how dare you like this movie. If you like it, go for it. That's your film. Like, that's fine. But if you ask my opinion, I'm going to tell you what I thought of it. I think that's also fair. So I'm telling you, I thought it fucking stank. I, I actively despised it. There was no minute of that movie I enjoyed. I didn't laugh once. I didn't enjoy any of it. I thought all the performances were dog shit. I did not understand why they cast you've got some great actors in there you've got i mean fuck I, you know why why have you got Willem Dafoe doing a Scottish accent what does that add to the character why is he doing a terrible Scottish accent and the argument is oh it's meant to be kind of laughable and ludicrous well it was laughable and ludicrous but not in a good way like if it's laughable and ludicrous because I'm thinking why have you done this there's no explanation for it it sounds like shit it doesn't make sense that's not an excuse I like Emma Stone. I like everyone in the film. 
Mark Ruffalo is not an actor. He's Mark Ruffalo in everything he does, which is fine. I like Mark Ruffalo. But I've seen a lot of Mark Ruffalo films, and he's always playing Mark Ruffalo. As soon as he tried to act, as he did in Poor Things, it was abysmal. He was dreadful. It was dreadful. Watch, watch the movies I mentioned. Watch Anatomy Before and tell me what acting is. Watch American Fiction and tell me what acting is. And tell me that you thought that Mark Ruffalo was good. Anyone can do cartoon over-the-top bullshit. It's not acting. It's not acting. It's like a caricature. It's ludicrous. And it's not funny. It's just dreadful. It was dreadful. All those other films I mentioned, fucking phenomenal. Watch those. Subtlety is the key to a performance. He was, yeah, he was good in Zodiac. But again, he's pretty much playing Mark Ruffalo. Dark Waters, guess who he played in that? Mark Ruffalo. Again, he was good. Enjoyed the movie. But he didn't play a particular character, did he? Paul Giamatti, you watch The Holdovers, he's playing a character in that. He was excellent. I think people for Mark Ruffalo are just excited he's escaped Marvel somewhat, you know? <laughs> They'll take fucking anything over him being in Marvel. Yeah, he's a likeable guy. Yeah. He's, a, he's a very likable guy. Like, I, I don't dislike Mark Ruffalo. I think he's a, he's a really likable guy. But he's not, a, like, an actor. Like, someone like Philip Seymour Hoffman, that's an actor. Anthony Hopkins, that's an actor. Javier Bardem, there's an actor. Emma Stone, she's an actor. But Mark Ruffalo is not an actor. He's Mark Ruffalo. He's a performer as Mark Ruffalo. He's appearing as Mark Ruffalo in whatever you put him in. No flame. Bibble study group is in skinny malinky. Is this skinny skinny malinky long legs? I think are both new new to the in-house. So skinny malinky long legs is a kid's book. Um, and the uh, skinny malinky long legs is a cat. People kept talking about Paul Atreides enough that I thought he was a real actor. Oh no, that's Slinky Malinky. <laughs> so Slinky Malinky, Google Slinky Malinky. Right, and Slinky, Slinky Malinky, Malinky is a black cat who prowls around and does cat things and is kind of mischievous and funny. Skinny Malinky Long Legs is just like a thing you say. I think that was, um, it's like almost like an insult for people. You say, that's a New Zealand book. Skinny Malinky, yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. Didn't real his was just uh, people keep talking about Paul Atreides enough that I thought he was a real actor. Didn't realize it was just a book. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not seen June yet, Ashy B? He saw it with me on uh, on Saturday. The second one. Had he seen the first one? The second one. Yeah, he saw the first one Friday night. He sent me a mess. He, he literally sent me a message that he, he was cramming his homework in before the test. Good. Watched Dune one like in between midnight and one. <laughs> 1am. What did he make of the part 2? Uh, he really enjoyed it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully he'll be here to give his, his opinion that as well. That would be nice. I mean, I just thought, like, I love the storyline, but even as a spectacle, it was exceptional. Like, it was such a beautiful film. And we saw it in uh, Kingston. There's a, 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 a Curzon in, in Kingston, where yeah. they've got, like, the sofas and everything... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we sat quite far back because I've sat close to a screen recently for an IMAX film and I just had to crane my neck constantly to see what was going on. That was uh, that was something. So we sat reasonably far back, but the sound, it was Dolby Atmos, which I'd never heard before. It, it was so good. And the sound design in June is so fucking good that it was just unbelievable. It was absolutely unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe it. it was, I just I, uh, could not believe it. Yeah, I, I was just like leaning forward not blinking goosebumps yeah, everywhere yeah. just locked in so you know the scene where she's telling him he has to drink the water of life Re um, rebecca ferguson's character so jessica yeah that that scene was so intense her performance was so intense i was were, i was like welling up just because she was the, the like she was being so intense i was just completely sucked in i, I suddenly like realized i hadn't breathed in like a minute yeah i had I the exact, like, I, exact realization <laughs> when it else. was when it was him emerging from the dust with the sandworm just flipping behind him and walking towards the Unbe crowd of worshippers. Unbelievable. Oh, I couldn't breathe. Um, did you watch Boy and the Heron? I did. I was very, very disappointed. Really disappointed. Um, I'm going to pop to Lou. I'll tell you why I was disappointed in a moment.
I think the uh, the idea behind the Harkening Grayscale is that their like sun is very weird. It's why they're all pale bastards. And it fucking worked. I think those are supposed to be the representations of the you know, roaming gladiators. There'd be like uh, someone dressed as the god of death or whatever who'd come in and smash the hammer down on any gladiator that might be faking their death. I think that's stuff that was mostly made up rather than real, but I think that's what they were supposed to be. And they were helping the Narbaron win his fight, which he didn't like. Bloody cheaters. Oh yeah, the flat explosion where it's like ink was so cool. I did uh, I did at one point get confused. The the Bene Gesserit who went to the Harkonnen planet and slept with the Narbaron. I thought that was um I thought that was the Imperial Princess for a minute. I got a bit confused in the black and white and I, I fucking twigged it near the end. Uh but it was a different one. I don't know how they're going to do the time jump for the the demon baby to be Anya Taylor-Joy. You know? It's kind of difficult for her to play a toddler. What was I going to talk about? I've fucking forgotten. Uh, some uh, studio, most recent studio. studio oh, yeah, TV. yeah, yeah. Boy in the Heron. So, uh, I was I was fully up for um... Yeah, Leia, Leia Sedu was um, Lady. Um, I was saying in the in the the scene where she was seducing the Narbaron, I got her confused for the Imperial uh, daughter, Phoebe Bridges' character. I was like, "What no, the no, fuck?" No, no, that's is... not Phoebe Bridges. I know, I know. It's, um, but I just got them confused in that scene. I was like, "What the fuck?" That's Florence Pugh. Great, Florence Pugh. Even sorry. Who? I... So I was ha I was playing uh, poker with some friends of mine. They're a little bit prim. They're kind of quite you know uptight people they're lovely but they're not they're a little uptight and i said the best part of oppenheimer for me was seeing florence Pugh's tits 30 foot tall in the imax cinema which i thought was a funny comment and they all went dead silent and i was like come on that is funny like her tits were literally 30 foot tall and they were like they were there. <laughs> i was a little upset like to me that was the best bit of the film the bomb explosion and then florence Pugh's tits what's wrong with that <laughs> they, did, they didn't like that. Anyway, so the boy in the heron was... Here's my issue with it. And and I'll be honest with you, I, I'm a big Studio Ghibli fan. I've seen all of them, okay? And uh, I know that, I, you know, on the record, don't like anime and all the rest of it, but this is not typical anime. This is different. It's, it's much better than anime because it actually has human characters that say things and you understand the motivations and all the rest of it like they're actual human characters that are well written not just stereotypes which i feel a lot of anime is boy in the heron creates an interesting story for the first hour where it's about a boy living through wartime nice japan job, he's lost Ali his mother just as a bed for 53 months 30 foot fun thank you um it's an interesting setting we see the background the men arriving with the cockpits for fighters that are going to go off to fight the americans his father's like an industrialist his mother's died in firebombing or some kind of fire or something it's interesting and he's like constructing his own samurai sword it's like an interesting slow-paced story about a young boy living in wartime japan that's the first half of the film the second half of the film is oh now he's in the traditional ghibli fantasy world and by the way you have to learn all the rules of this, who all the characters are, and be invested in them in the short time we have left. That makes no fucking sense. Because if you think about Spirited Away, which I think is their best film, and I've seen all their films, that is the one that I enjoyed the most. I think it is the best. Again, I think it is the best. I'm not saying it is de facto the best. I'm, I don't have a formula to prove it. That was the one that I thought was the best film. She's introduced to the world quite early on. And we learn the rules of the world with her, and we become as attached to the characters as she is because we've seen those characters throughout the film. At the end of The Boy in the Harem, he's hugging goodbye with people that we met 
relatively speaking, five fucking minutes ago. And the old man who we see who's holding the world together or balancing it or whatever the fuck he's doing is apparently not a reference to anything in particular. That's just the guy. I think it's meant to be the, the filmmaker's grandfather. And he taught him about world building. And this is just meant to be like a nod to him. So it's that flippant, quite frankly. And I felt that it lacked any of the humor or the interest or the depth of other Ghibli movies. And I thought that it introduced you to things and then discarded them as quickly as it could in an attempt to con you into thinking that you were being delivered this wonderful fantasy world when in fact you were skirting the surface of a bunch of ideas that never went deeper than the surface. That's how it felt. Uh, House Moving Cast, I understand. That's also a very, very good film. Um, so that's what I thought of it. I thought it was super disappointing. Um, and I thought this was his sign-off film. So I think he kind of just tapped out and just put a bunch of... not. Uh, he, said it, he said it's his final film about 30 fucking times. Right, well, well maybe this is because he's fucking old. But the point is, the stuff about his grandfather and his stuff, it's like, this isn't connected to the story. You can't just drop this in. Like, we were introduced to the main antagonist of Spirited Away was the old lady who ran the uh, bathhouse early on. So you can't set up an antagonist and protagonist uh, situation where you only meet one of the most important characters in the last five minutes of the film and the king of the Canary people, played by I think fucking Dave Bautista, turns up with like two minutes to go. Like what the fuck is going on here? Who is this guy? And that woman who I think was meant to be his mother as a child or something, they spoke like three lines to each other. Why is this important? It was just baffling. The woman who catches him on the shore and helps him out. I thought, all right, this is going to be the start of something. Instead, she's just like, don't look backwards or the ghost will do this to you. And then he's on to another bit. Don't step on the red steps or this will happen. Don't open the door or the so-and-so's. It's just like rule, 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 rule. But there's no background. It's just, it's almost like constant stupid puzzles that of course he gets his way out of and then the film is over. So it was super, super, super disappointing to me. I, I was enjoying it. Hello. I thought it was going to be different. Hello? It wasn't. Ashley, Hello. get in here. I'll try. I was going to say, my fa my, do you know, my actual favourite part of that movie was seeing seeing the bird king for the first time and seeing him being like an inspiring leader you know yeah yeah i don't know why but i really enjoyed that it's like yes hell yes birds you have a great king i like he's that gonna, he's gonna fight for you I, to the I end. did like how goofy all the birds were yeah they, they were just for some reason they were they were imagined as just like gym bros i didn't really yeah, understand yeah, but yeah, they were yeah. all just like sort of marching around it was it was kind of funny but i didn't think they had that much direction I just, I just felt like if they're like the, the, the problem that he's facing, wouldn't it be interesting if we had seen them earlier? Like, yeah, this well, character's I mean, this, just this arrived. Is with, 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 with a lot of Studio Ghibli films, I mean, the first half was quite realistic and relatable. It was very slow, and I and thought this is a change sudden, of pace. Yeah, all of a sudden, the, the. Uh, Someone took some Henry Hoover action over the cocaine, and 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 then things just got real very quick, or well, unreal in in many yeah, ways. Yeah, exactly. I, there's I, no time to be I, attached I, I, to I, I heard what you, I, I, I heard what you saying just before I left to to go go on my PC. What the hell was the old man doing? Yeah, what was, was taking what was control that? of the world? What was he that? was just like a lad who was like, well, I can't deal with it anymore, and then all of a sudden. The young, the young lad was just like, well, I also can't deal with it. So everyone was just like, well, shit. I guess we're fucked. <laughs> we're shit. leaving. We're Bird leaving. Yeah, was, my, was... my long reign come to a crushing end. Yeah. Well, I put all my chips in this one lad who didn't even know I existed five minutes ago. Right. Like, it would be like if the Lord of the Rings, they just found their way to Mount, Mount Doom. It would be like, well, what do you mean, Mount Doom? What about the ring? We're like, oh, we're just wandering around here. We just bumped into you. And he was like, you got through the ring and the fire. And he's like, well, I don't want to. End of film. Like, that's it. <laughs> this fucking shit. And Sauron's army was just a bunch of... Canaries. Bunch of fucking parrots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, and as soon as they... Uh, as soon as they exited Mordor, they were just a bunch of little shitters <laughs> just, just flapping Have about. Have you seen the uh, animated Lord of the Rings movie with the, with the orc song in it? 
Uh, so I have because that was all we had when I was a lad. Young where there's boy. a whip, there's a way. I yeah. actually can stick that on very happily and just listen to it. It's so fucking good. That was Ralph Bakshi, I think, the animator who. Let me look it up. I'll post it. I'll post it in our chat. Ten seconds. I'll, I'll fucking. Oh wait. Ah, shit. Jonas might want the. Uh... Five seconds. Dire team pick. So this was the there. There was also an animated Hobbit movie, which is often forgotten. But the Lord of the Rings movie, when I was a kid, they showed the Hobbit movie and they showed that movie quite often on telly. And there was nothing else fantasy on TV. Like there was just nothing uh, until like the fucking Willow came out. Willow, the movie, the George Lucas movie, with. Um, like, uh, God, who was in that? Val Kilmer was in it. Warwick Davis was in it. And a couple other people. And I was like, finally. Because I was playing, like, Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. I was super into Warhammer and fantasy and stuff. When did the original no Dungeons and Dragons movie come out? Original Dungeons and Dragons movie? What, the ones with... Um, one, like, ages ago. There was. I would have been in the 2000s, I think. That had... Uh, what's his name in... Um, Jeremy Irons was the baddie in it, wasn't he? Ten seconds remaining. Two thousand. Dire team ban. Two thousand and. I mean, and the fact that they waited like twenty two, <laughs> twenty three years to make another one probably yeah. says. Thora about Birch. As much as you need to know. Thora Birch used to be absolute numero uno hottie. I'm always surprised there's no Terry Pratchett anything, really. That's a very, very good fucking point, Young Plague. Five seconds remaining. Give it give it literally five years, there will be. Radiant I hope so. I, they tried to do a guards one that everyone hated because they gave Vimes like a mohawk or something and made him really punk. I was like, no. <laughs> Apart from that, it's only like animated ones from the BBC in like the 90s. Um, I mean, there's do you nothing think really this, this sort of style fits more a TV show or movie? Um, TV show, I think. I think a TV show, Radio like Color of Magic. The, the Witches, you can do as a movie, but the, the, the Color of Magic was the first TV. book of his I read. Mort was my favorite, which is where Death is like hanging out with them. That yeah. was a great fucking book. There is, I read all of that stuff when I was at school. I read all the Terry Pratchett books that were out, but I did. I stopped reading them after that. But um, I don't know. I feel like maybe um. It's a little too quirky, maybe. It's like yeah. it's a very British sense of humor. Radiant I think a lot of it, and a lot of it, a lot of the the humor is in the sort of narration, if you like, rather than in. That's the, a good the point. Dialogue. It'd be hard to to make that transition. I think if you did it animated and had a narrator, it would be fine. It had the right anim the right narrator, and pick the right lines. It would Ten be funny. But that, th those are books that like really get to me. The Tiffany Tiffany Aching ones, oh, I can cry my eyes out reading those books. It's just unbelievable. I think I've read those. I mean, not. It's really like I think because he's getting older and thinking more about old age and death. But every time Granny Weatherwax shows up, it's so emotional. <laughs> no, I, I I mean the thing is like. I'll be honest with you, Lenny, on... I, I think Apple has done a great job of making some really genuinely amazing films and TV shows. Um, I think Amazon and Netflix, it's kind of a coin toss because they have done some really great shows, both of them, and some really dog shows. And there are shows but, that they have Isn't, isn't his comment about adaptations of... of, of he says, I don't trust any of the major streaming services to do it well as a series right now. I, I think I, I would if, if, a, if the right person was involved. The problem is we had things like The Rings of Power, which a lot of people really hated. I watched it, it was alright. It was it, it was great. okay. It was it was, it was okay. just it was it was it was it was very safe. It wasn't it, was. it wasn't particularly Yeah, it was very safe. Any any one way or the other. Good omens, I, I mean, didn't, you I didn't ask like my that. opinion on uh, on June two. Oh um, what was your as, opinion? As as a as a, as a, as a non June enjoyer. I, I think on, in terms of a standalone movie, it is it is a, an incredible cinematic experience. Yeah, I, I I was like fell in love with all of the the world building that, yeah. that was put down in 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 the second movie and and in some ways the first movie. I just think that 
Um, it th th there's there's I think this is kind of like remaining. quite a large problem with all these movies who decide to split themselves into two or three parts. Where if you actually think about Dune two, I don't actually think there was anything that went wrong for the protagonist in in the movie, which meant that there was for a, for a, for a non enjoyer, there was no real like downside to pay mm. off if you viewed it as an individual film. No, you are. Which, yeah, that's actually a good point. Like he doesn't lose anyone. No, he just he just dubs like throughout the entire thing. He's just dubbing. So like, there, there's no real like. I, I will only pay. say this: that remember the first film is all else. Yes, I I, I appreciate that. That's why I'm like viewing it as a as a collective. Yeah. But um, I mean, the, the, I, I the, the first quite, film it, it, it doesn't like follow the traditional yeah. sense of a movie. I'm, where I'm you unmodding have the... Miles. Let me just unmod Miles real quick here. <laughs> <laughs> But he might only be talking about Dune 1, which was like a world building. <laughs> scene oh, I'm sorry. Story. Dune was met, in my opinion, kind of mid. That's fucking ludicrous, dude. That is the dumbest fucking opinion. That is so fucking dumb. Like, what are you rating? You're, aren't you a massive fucking weeb, Miles? Big fucking weeby Miles doesn't like it. I don't understand any of the characters. They were acting like human beings. Five seconds. Necro? Legion? Well, this is interesting. Yeah, just like if you take the second movie isolated, they made they made no boo boos. It was a perfect game of dotes. They just absolutely dumpstered the opposition, which is fair enough. I mean, it's part two. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's part two. Yeah, no, I'm no, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the crash. It, it I mean, in some ways, it would be like. I mean, if you if you took like Avengers. Endgame, for yeah. example, which is which is a, all a long ass movie. Big L. So, in Infinity War yeah. is all L's, but Endgame is all... technically speaking is a lot of dubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's exactly. A significant amount of dubs. Although there is a slight L near the start, yeah, where yeah. like they are presented with a dilemma in that Thanos just seppukus himself. Five seconds um, remaining. I just think that that Dune two could have used a bit of that, where there was a little bit of like. What are we working towards at the start of the movie? I mean, I, su I suppose they, like, the, the issue is the issue is Radiant that it is a book split over two films. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's it, it's. I mean, it's here's, a here's a question for you. With the here's a question for you. Did you Knight. enjoy the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Of course. Of course. In the third film, what is the L that they suffer in the third film? Um. Ten seconds remaining. The thing is, you know, I don't know if I've ever watched Five the movies individually before. I guess that's the problem with it. Like, if you the watch with... June and June 2, June 2 is like, fucking finally. Like, it's the struggle of him to become what he's meant to become, and then becoming yeah. that thing and winning. I mean, there, there is, there is, there is, of there, course, there, you're you're way that, you know, he's, 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 he's kind of drifting want. away from your own ideals right. of what he should be. Which is like the the moral dilemma of the film yeah um in that like at the start he's just a lad are very to, much on board yeah. with what he's trying to do and at the end you're like i'm happy for what he's done but at the same time like you're you're a little bit fearful about what he's become yeah like in a way like when he says like she says to him jessica says to him uh hold on a sec your father wasn't about revenge he goes well i am you realize, oh shit! Like when they said, "Are oh, we going to be able to control him if even if we create a Crusade Satellite Act?" No, they cannot. And he is now out of control. He's out for revenge. He's going to fucking kill everyone and everything. They're not just going to assume power. He's going to shatter the entire empire. Like that is the cost. So really, the 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 film makes you think afterwards. Was Paul the goody? Like, did he actually do something good? Because he sees the future, which is the billions will die. And he's like, yeah, fuck it. I think this is the right thing to do because the empire's shit. But a lot of innocent people are caught up in that. I think that's a very interesting question to ask. So but it's although only, it is it's only, dogs, it's only after he drinks the, the water of, life. The water of yeah. life or whatever that he thinks that. I mean, before that, he sees the vision and he's like, I can't do this. Yeah, and then he's and like, then he actually, has a little bit of the Gatorade, and yeah. then all of a sudden he's like, hell yeah. He's like, actually, Bam, you know what? Let's go. this is the way. Because he saw all the alternate parts, and he was like, yeah, fuck it. 
I, I, don't, I don't know if I would say he was never the good guy because I haven't read the other books. But essentially, he does become a religious leader of like a universal jihad against everything that is currently standing. But you have to ask yourself, was what currently existed worth overthrowing? And it might be argued that given that an entire house, a good house, was brought down by the emperor because he's a fucking jealous prick, and Baron Harkonnen, the most evil fucker, was basically in charge of Arrakis, is Paul the bad guy? I don't know if I do believe that. I think, in fact, it was about tearing down the, the whole system. And if you're saying Paul was wrong to do that, I, I'd have to disagree with you. I, uh, I think I, I disagree by the way, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out their lineup here. I, I think, I guess it's Mid Necro. It's Mid Necro, Offlane Axe, Carry Jug. Jug being, by some distance, the worst Boz one in the game right now. <laughs> so glasses is has been given this because he can play nothing else. Right. God bless glasses. Play with glasses. I mean, I'm the other sure day. we talked about this before, but what sort of name is glass? It's, it's your bonks. It's, like, it's your it's boots. It's like naming yourself socks. It's or your something. bonks. It's your boots. It's your glasses. It's the same thing. Here's oh, Gotastic. Stun it's one. A, it's the sniffer. Get him, T. They get him. Malinky. Malinky down. Get Ratchet. Ratchet next. Ratchet next. <laughs> What, what is what is Bobby doing? He's getting in there. That's what he's doing. He's he telling us to bits. He's going down. That's one. <laughs> two, for two. two for two. But I still think that's pretty good. They'll respawn before the rune spawn. We can go round two here. Let's get in there, team. Get in there. Look, they have TPs. They're going to run. Oh, they won't get there in time. <laughs> Better Sean than the one to watch. Proper, honest to God shitter. Former Herald, newly minted Guardian One, mm, Shadow Shaman. Interesting. Ratchet. This is some Ratchet notes right here. The battle begins. So Ratchet is like that Harkonnen guy who just fucked up the entire time during the second movie. <laughs> I think it's, he might have done really good stuff in the first movie. What, Raban. But... Raban. Yeah, whatever, whatever fucking um, Dave Bautista's oh, character. Yeah, wh whatever, whatever Bautista's character was. He just, he just fucked up. And do you know what? That made him more endearing. Yeah, he, he was endearing. You, you like, he was just, he like was just a did. guy who was just trying his goddamn best. He, he got a bit mad. You know, he fucked up a little bit. Rats! Rats! Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't handle it. Trashmaster right says, Shadow Shaman Alistair. is my friend. Jellyfish We're terrible make together. Fair play, that's for dope. Santa yeah, that's dope. Yes, Ratchet. Just click him, Ratchet, mate. Yeah, we've got, we've got Munt. You know. <laughs> and, and Hoss. And me. Honestly. <laughs> Mun is worse than Hoz. Mun is worse than Hoz. Yeah, I, I would actually agree with that. Mun is a giga troll. So is he, Mun, Mun does not recognize the fact that he is, he is a garbage noob. What? 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 <laughs> Look at Ratchet getting double dotted down. Welcome to lane, a, buddy. It's a pretty absurd lane to play against. I, I always hate it when I'm in this, this lane and my axe is battle hungering the carry. Just bully the fuck out of their five. Like, we can feast oh, on his ratchet. corpse. That's a stream snipe. I do believe that is a stream snipe. <laughs> I do think what Masterway does in this lane is max dispersion. Just don't even bother yeah, with anything yeah. else. It just survive. I mean, the regen on Shackle is actually crazy. And he it can is get good. A Shackle without... Without there is one interrupt, so there's fire blast, like, right? So it's yeah. 75 heal at, Mac, at, at level 1. 75. Yeah, and if you get level 2, you're you're healing a crazy yeah, amount. Yeah, it's 150, that's pretty good. He's, well, he's struggling here. here. Ratchet is... <laughs> he's, he's Not struggling. a spellcaster. He's, well. he's just walking about still. He's just, yeah, he no worries. Battle hunger is up in 7, Ratchet, my boy. Oh, I'm missing kills elsewhere. Sniper died. Lion died. I don't care. We're watching my boy Ratchet. Mm. New houses. Let's see how he does. Wait, Glasson's got a kill. It is a. It's a possible sniper that they're going to be trying to hunt down. I think that is that is Robertus. I feel like whoever Glasses kills has to name themselves Glasses to to insinuate like a like a nerd game. curse being passed yeah. on. Yeah. Eri, <laughs> is this is this? I mean, a lad called Microsoft PowerPoint. Pretty bad. He played for Ice Shitters in one game, and we lost. Oh. We lost. I, I don't know if you lads. I, I presume you lads have not have been following the. Uh, Here GFG we go, T. He. Yes. We have not been following GFG. No. Ice Shitters have one one series win. Would you believe? Oh shit! It? Was it Who against GFG? I, I I don't know. I don't know. But all I know is we won against something. 
Because I, I do remember when we were like, oh, I don't know, lads, GFG might be a bit good for the in-houses. And they got fucking destroyed. Skinny Millie, yeah, long legs. Totti is it. like a, a very intelligent, you know, head screwed on lad. But then That's we realized that, that does not translute. No, trans translate it doesn't translate into, or translute into Dota no. skill. No, no transing happens in, into Dota with that. Do you know and what? Totti is, is probably one of the worst. So, <laughs> one of the worst to ever touch the, the game, disc. I'd say. <laughs> oh, poor Scotty Dotes. His name is Scotty <laughs> oh, Dotes, though. So I yeah. remember talking to Scotty. Yeah, but hang on, hang on. Let, let me just counter counter please, that no, argument. Please, Sarah Beth. Oh, her Twitch name is Sarah Beth Dotes. I'm just. <laughs> if you have Dotes in your name, I feel like you're more likely to be shit. Yeah, agreed. I've I've got two two examples. You know, I re I think Ratchet has not been able to get a single CS to get rid of Battle Hunger once. No, he keeps trying to get like a random deny, and he just he can't cope. He can't. <laughs> is he gonna? He I, I, I would. He is maxing Battle He's Hunger gonna, on Microsoft on, get, Powerpoint. Get in there. Come on, Ratchet. This is your moment. You see it? He, no, it's no. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's he got, got it. He got it. Did you get it? No, no I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Took it again. Oh, he's, like, he's, oh, he's been oh, hit by fucking. He's got both dots on. Fire flask. Oh, Ratchet, you got to get a CS or you're actually. No, he's he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> Ratchet's run the numbers, Blake. Have you run the numbers? I've yeah. not run the numbers. Ratchet clearly better than me. The other crazy thing happening right now is Zeus has twelve denies. Which is a rare one for a hero that typically only CSs with Q. So, remember the wise words of Melini back in the day. What did he say? He said, if you're using Q to farm on Zeus, get an old talisman and learn to fucking last hit. That was True. what he said. This lad has 80 damage right now. Necro has 64. Yeah, so, you can't stand near Necro, you just lose the lane. He doesn't sad. give a shit about that. I think it's probably Necro just isn't playing at the right spot on the lane. I'll, I'll be honest with you, the, the problem with Necro here is he's every time every time Zoe Potato gets zapped, she backs up. Because this is magic damage, not physical, so it's a bit different. And Zeus doesn't rely on like his health as much. He can stay way back, not like a melee hero or something, which is like the dream as a mid Necro. You're up against like a Pudge or something, who just has to stand there and fucking eat shit the whole time you're in lane. So Zoe's yeah. like, shit, I can't just press W and live against Zeus because he can just fucking zap me. And Zeus does have a strong right click. And whilst your Necro trying to last it with your Q, um, those little skulls take some time. They're slow moving. Some of the slowest oh, projectiles in the game. Axe has already got Vanguard, which means he can he can just take control yeah, of the game pretty soon. To be fair, Masaway so far, despite the, the significant handicap he has been handed, uh, is CSing pretty well. Well, dare I, I say mean, it, I mean, I, I, I can't say for Masaway, as a uh, I Shitters player, oh, he, he, is, shitters. he is the ultimate trainee of the handicap in that he has Chrono leaning with him. Oh, you're right, he he's studied under Chrono. He knows <laughs> yeah. exactly what it's like to face <laughs> the shit to pause five every game. I, I will also say this for Masaway, um... None of this harass has been coming their way. It's all oh, been yeah. on Ratchet. It's all been bloody Ratchet. Like, he's got two tangos. He has barely had to do shit. Ratchet got... has had to buy fresh tangos. <laughs> so bad for Ratchet, so... you're right. He's, he's winning this uh, late time. Just, I don't think just uses by a being hit. spell out of his entire arsenal no, at, this, at, this, at, this, at this point. Just <laughs> by he's, being he's, pathetic, he's, he's winning the lane he, for Spectre. He has he's, done, missed, he's missed the ball <laughs> once again. <laughs> He's done incredibly well for Spectre. Mazaway is like, don't change anything you're doing. It's the easiest like ever had. Yeah. He's he's basically playing by himself in lane because it's actually over <laughs> only care <laughs> 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 oh, oh Ratchet. Sensible tank is that Ratchet. As long as you stay in this up. lane, you're winning. <laughs> Ratchet is like, I'll take it for you, Mark. This is like a hate crime at this point. I this think at this point, brutal. Spectre should not, you're giving Ratchet some tangos. Yeah, you know, yeah, as long as he's got the sticks here, he doesn't need oh, dear. He's got need 12 tangos. stick charges as well. Yeah. Sarah Beth Artifact. Was that Sarah's name for a while? Yeah. You'd name yourself Sarah Beth Oh, Artifact. nice skill. Rotting tongue. I think I've played about 45 minutes of Artifact. Not a great amount. 
I played in the beta, um, which put me off a little bit, simply because all the lads in the beta Don't were a combination of people like me, like me, then there was like Suns fan who took it very seriously and is good at games, Slacks who took it very seriously and is good at games, and then a bunch of TCG players who were insanely good at the game. And I was like, huh, I can't really do anything. And poor, poor Ratchet. All right, this has to be the end of Ratchet now. Here comes a TP. Sniper's He's coming alive. in. Is he going to he he deny skinny. Ratchet? Ratchet! Ratchet, no! He lives! Get back in there, Ratchet. You're, you're <laughs> He's still not used a single spell this late, I'm convinced. <laughs> Why hey. are you buying mana boots? Just buy something else. Buy a day one. on, ironically. He knows to get how to get rid of battle. He's gone for denies, but every single time Massaway has taken it. Yeah, Massaway not being cool. That's, Massaway that's cool has realized very quickly that the best way to win this lane is to get them to focus poor old Ratchet. I think he understands <laughs> the entertainment value of Ratchet being battle hungered is keeping them hooked, you know? I like I like to imagine the Massaway is like, oh no, come Still get the supply. Supply. <laughs> Still went for Ratchet instead. That's unbelievable. Oh no, the Ratchet, no! no! All right, that's it. No. He gave him a tango. No! <laughs> no, Ratchet. How could you? And now the Spectre's terrified. Like, oh shit, I'm going to have to lay him now. <laughs> I'm jumping. No, he's got Zeus. He's got Zeus. Yeah. Zeus, is here Zeus! Dead. Zeus, help me. They might cast a spell on me. <laughs> he's gone 0 3 2 on Axe. What the? Mate, why wouldn't you? He's got no call. Oh my god. I'm gonna I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I I support this build simply because he can just fucking put this shit on the lads and. and Look, Ratchet Ratchet back. That's what you're saying. Damage. He doesn't give a shit about calling Spectre. He's not gonna kill Spectre. What they can do is just kill fucking Ratchet. Oh, there's there big things He's happening dead. in other lanes. Bible studies dead. Who's called Bible studies? It's Bibble study group. That's Bib actually. Bibble, Bibble, study, Bibble group study group. Bible study group. I have to look this up. Oh, hello! Yes, Ratchet! Yes! Yes, a spell Wait, cast. he cast a spell? Yeah, two of them! Oh my god. Never seen such action in the top lane. He just got his keyboard delivered by Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they've cast Battle Hunger and the, uh, and the Ignite on spec. They've realised something. That's always now like, Ratchet! Ratchet, what are you? You'll lose it. Give me a tango. <laughs> I wonder what, what, what iteration of tango this is for Ratchet. So good. Oh dear. Worried, Mazaway? This is what you get for abandoning your sup. He needs Ratchet to start walking forwards again. Ratchet, you need to stop being so afraid. <laughs> you Keep need to get up there, bud. We don't care if you've perished. Cast two spells in 11 minutes. Get up there. I just I've just watched Ratchet for eleven minutes and I've not I've not been bored once. This no, is delightful. I gotta I gotta look at other yeah. things. Mid lane, Why we need mid lane new is, is dubbed for Zoe, mostly because Zeus just decided to sit top. Is he gonna get a pull minutes. off? Yes! 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 <laughs> I think that's helped <laughs> helped. This why the creeps being under the tower, we'll take it. Go! Yes! Yes! Oh wait, <laughs> is that God damn, Ratchet is fucking ticking. I'm not kidding, one more round of spells each, he dies. He's walking forwards. <laughs> There's a Zeus ult. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, no, 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 not our boy. No, Ratchet, live. Ratchet. The CS, Ratchet, you can do it. Uh, uh, <laughs> the CS. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, yes, oh, yes, Ratchet. Ratchet, yes. Yes, Ratchet, yes. Oh, what a play. Zap him. No. Oh. Where's Mazelway? He's died. Mazelway's dead. dead. Boy, did Mazelway die? <laughs> Report axe! Like a good bottle. There's four bot for some reason. <laughs> I, think, I think he got sick of Ratchet, but he should never have doubted him for a second. He, the moment he left him. Where's I was sick of Ratchet. I think Ratchet, Ratchet has performance anxiety. That's the problem. You know, someone, someone in his lane watching him from his team, like scared him. Didn't cast any spells. Second they left. Oh he turns my into fucking, uh... god! Raiding a 4k gold ahead. Oh no, this is a Dyer's terrific stop. Zoe has got bot and is going hard. Yeah, this is the the gamer necro build. No fucking around with radiance. Bot's heart ags unkillable. 
So are you? Is this a is this a slight at Greg Necro? It is. Right? Never fucking build radiance. It's yes, a slight at Greg Kunker as well. Easy kill. He tried to build radiance on Kunker. Easy kill. Easy game. kill. Has, has there been a Veno today by any chance? No. No. There wasn't AA though from Munticus. Which did actually perform pretty well, apart from you know having be, being an AA in lane and struggling. Oh, sorry. I thought about the inner houses. No, we're. No, I was I was talking in general because Blake had some strong words about Munt Veno. It was a rough one. It was a rough one. Mont Veno. Yeah. Well, so so the the context is is we played a game of Dokes oh, against shit. T Governor. Yeah. It I was heard. the worst game we've ever played. Mum played Veno, Fosfall, and went. Uh, Ratchet is going back. There's the jewel. He is in trouble. Oh shit. This might, not be, this might not be too bad for the Dyer. Here. I think Dyer can yeah. win this. It's looking pretty bad. Oh, they've 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 won. They've won. Oh, Ratchet, no. It's another good trapping. He knows how to do that one thing very well. Get the dunk! Well. Watch out. So, uh, Munt uh, played Venno and he paused for when he built like Spirit Wrestle Ags. Played not impressed. Right. And Munt's, uh, Munt's conclusion from the game is that we need to play... We can only play ranked from now on. We okay. Can't play on Munt, uh, which obviously excludes Young Plague and Young Greg. Um, so there was, there was there was certainly some... We did, we did some unranked today. We did some unranked. It was good fun. Yeah, one and so, so I mean, we, we played one game of ranked afterwards, and the game was as hard, if not harder, than the unranked. But it was a dust we still, Ergo. We, we did win, but I, I, I put my heart and soul into that. That's, that's the thing, right? Everyone, like, that's what kind of slightly annoys me about is he always picks and plays his worst in the hardest games. <laughs> And then when it's just like an easy game, he tries his fucking arse off and it's like, God, it's, it's so much easier when we're playing ranks. He's like, no, it's no shit. You didn't pick Ven fucking Venno. I'll level with you. The well, whole ranked unranked you know thing, thing is bullshit. Game? I, I can't it's run. bullshit. This whole unranked rank thing is fucking bullshit. Hang on, let me, let me see. Like this idea that unranked to get harder games. What do you think? The other guys never get harder games? It's very, very main character. It's, it, he, it's played, fucking he played ridiculous. Void. To be fair, he, 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 did, he did have some really, he had some really good chronos, but he also was a massive troll. <laughs> Munt, Munt's got like a Munt is like, he's got the, like the invincibility, idea about himself. Like he's he's like four points deep and he can just do anything. Right. Um, so he would just run in, and just take a fight four v one for some reason. And 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 the thing about Munt, is. You'll be like, what the hell are you doing? And he's like, why are you blaming me? I'm just trying to make plays. There, there's no apology. There's no like, oh, I just fucked up, lads. I, I completely yeah, overestimated like, how well, well I did. He's like, well, uh, you know, uh, if, if ten things were different, it would have been a good play. So actually, you guys are shit. Do you know what it is? Do you remember when I would come back from events and be like, right, lads, I've got some brilliant new ideas. Yeah. Munt spends his entire working day watching those games. So in his no, mind, he doesn't play spoil day. No, he's watching the games with Radiant's half an eye. Trust me, I've seen him. I mean, you got to remember, a lot of the time, fuck all's happening in Dota. Yeah. Like, the draft is 25 fucking minutes long. Then the laning yeah. stage is like 20 minutes long. There's no clippable, shareable moments there unless something really crazy happens. <coughs> and you'll hear the commentators talking. You look up, you clip it, and you Dyer's fucking put it on socials. Like, it's not like you well, have that's, to... That's Greg's job now. And this is, yeah. this is one of the, the biggest L's about the new ESL era, is that Greg is now no longer the idiot. Greg is Greg is the knowledgeable one. So if he <laughs> says something like, Oh, fuck you. <coughs> Ember Spirit's really strong right now, lads. It, that is the case. And I can't be like, Greg, you're talking shit, mate. Ember Spirit's got a 35% win rate at the moment. Greg is right, which which is deeply painful. Because yeah, he's he's a professional Dota 2 uh, analyst, lad. Hey, it's I'm a professional the Dota 2 player. I'm the analyst and panelist. He's just a lad. He is a, he's a professional Dota 2 lad. Oh, PowerPoint. I, I'll I be do, honest I'm... with you. The fact that Culling Blade goes on a fucking minute and a half cooldown is ridiculous. <laughs> it, I think it's fair punishment for, for Tom Foolery. But later on, especially, I, but, it's so but, hard okay. to nail. It. I mean, I mean, if you think about if you think about the Buddha, right? I just think, think I'm about thinking the about Buddha. it. I'm thinking about Buddha. But, okay, so you have you have intense satisfaction and intense pain, and the satisfaction is only worth because of the intense pain you feel. Okay, as, Kier as Kierkegaard feel, said, "Life without pain, pain has no meaning." That, when that 
Culling Blade goes on cooldown. You are you're devastated. Yeah. I I, I can no longer blow. dunk someone for ninety seconds. So when that next dunk comes, you're grateful. You you I you, see. You you thank you thank the lords above you. I think it was Kierkegaard. For, for this opportunity for a dunk. I'm gonna Google that. Life without pain has no meaning. Do you know the we were joking about today was uh, a month being on holidays can be completely identical to month being at work because he's just gonna be playing Hoy all day. I was shopping out. <laughs> My bad. I was shopping out. Radiance bottom tower. Don't the miss the dunk, is, says me, with Evan. All these, with all these oldie names. Me, Evan, you're in, shit. I, I can't tell if they were a philosopher, a musician, or an artist. <laughs> they all just have the same name. It's well, always not like nowadays when you'd know, you'd know the musicians because they were called Lil something. So that's you know, oh, he was it's a musician. Well, I mean, see, nowadays we have that advantage. But we know they're a musician because they're Lil something. You don't get a philosopher called Lil something. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Lil, you have, Lil, you Lil, Lil, Confucius or... Lil Schopenhauer. Lil Lousy. Yeah. <laughs> Lil Freud. Lil Freud. Well, that's Freudian in itself. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Think. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you haven't seen American Fiction, it's amazing, you should watch it. If you haven't seen Anatomy of a Fall, it's amazing, you should watch it. Holdovers, same review. Look at this smoke, by the way. Oh, They're coming in. Oh, hello. It's, oh, it's, 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 it's kind of worked. Oh, it's worked. yes. Pachow. That's an incredible play. That and he's great. got the he's got the reload on Assassinate for round two. No! Oh. Ratchet! Play, what do we give on those sort of plays? Commiserations, commiserations to that defeat. Commiserations? So, so I'll be giving congratulations to Ratchet, them, but... Ratchet, I want to give you a little tip. When you're looking to cast a spell and you know it's coming, click on it first and then just just keep clicking it and clicking and you'll you'll get it. Like, you can turn it on quick cast as well. That's apparently a thing that people do. Oh, dear. Glasses? Yeah, I don't know why Zeus did that. Oh, Robertus! High five. Very cool. High five. High fucking five, bud. That was nice. He's got a Yasha. That was very nice. He's going He's for the build. He's team. doing the build. I was like, why is I he just, doing this? I, I, and then he I, did I the thought, old. I, he baited out the old and leapt back to the crep wave. All right, this is the game of the night. Game of the night. Thank God. Where on air are you? <laughs> giving us a game. It's a whipping, but if it wasn't for Ratchet, this would be a disaster. I mean, it's only gone up. It's only 5k now. <laughs> Game two was what legit was a good like game. Minutes. Game one was shit, an airy classic. This an game is also an airy classic, but is entertaining Radiant's for reasons that Ratchet. Have you played yeah. Zeus recently, Ted? I have a couple of times, yeah. Have you have you gone for the Manta build? I tried the right click build, uh, and I did get the Manta, and it's okay. I'm just used to. I, I prefer to be a guy who sits at the back, yeah, and just casts a few sort of. Electric spells so every now and then. If you I can't get... be the guy who's in the middle. Right, but you're not, because the thing is, your illusions also proc the lightning hands. So the whole point of yeah, the I know, is just, you just shift them. I feel, in. I, feel, I feel awkward about it, just sending my illusions in. It feels like, you know, Zeus' gameplay before was very simple. Yeah. I just sat at the back and just just, just rained hell down on the enemy. Yeah, but yeah. Now no I'm fair. Think about, am I? Am I? Should I be utilizing this right click side of me well? Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it takes some getting used to for sure. Because the thing is, the hero traditionally, like you said, you've been the guy at the Radiance back that everyone's like, "Holy shit, we got to get on top of this Zeus," and that's very hard to do. Can you duel the uh, Tawny? By the way, um, I don't think anyone has ever tried. <laughs> I, I don't think so, but you can't duel creeps. No, that's not. Oh, there goes Sniper. Wait, what? He died to. Uh, oh, to Dormy. He sacrificed he himself got, to get the shard. The shard I'm, I'm convinced. I've never seen someone die to Tormy and not get the shard immediately after. Go in! <laughs> What's happening? I don't know, but he's stacking his stuns like a crazy person. He comes around. Perspective. <laughs> Good job, Ratchet. <laughs> That's a Ratchet play. That's Ratchet going in the they can't resist the They can't resist it. The thing is, I would want my support to come up and tank that death for me, and Ratchet did it. I don't know if Ratchet did it because they know 
I will debate the lads to kill me instead of my carry. Or if Ratchet was I like, think, I think Ratchet what's is going like on up here? He's just a moth. He, he he's attracted towards some kind of activity. Robertus. Oh, nice call. Oh, so close. No. Oh, you oh, fucking right. Bad for Max. I will say there is a there's a fundamental honesty about terrible Dota players that is really appreciated, you know? Yeah. Shen Shaman's never gonna try and run away from that fight. He sees heroes, he goes in. Every time. Yeah, but I don't know if that's honesty or ignorance. They can they can look very similar at times. Uh, yeah, I know. They, 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 they definitely overlap at some point. But look at this. He saw Hero's top. Where is he heading? He's walking straight top. No fear. Yeah, no. no it, 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 it's going. not. It's not. It's not bravery. It's not. Uh, no, but he's never an honest scrap. It, you know, it's, he's it's not. Just be, it's just being a moth. It's being. He's not here to wait around. Being in someone's face. Wait around. He's Look at him. It's just it's just brownie in motion that's occurring in Ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't disjoint Spectre. Interesting. Right. No, that shit follows you everywhere. Oh, have you noticed when it ends, it's sometimes just a flat line? Yeah. Look at that. It's just a fucking line. It doesn't taper. It's just a completely straight line. That's so shit. Here we go. Oh, Notastic is in. Here's the text. Where's glasses? Oh, Zoe's so low. Holy shit, but can turn and get the ult. Oh, oh glasses, there we go. That's nice. Like, ratchet down. Ratchet. That's the way down. So close to down on Zoe. The heart is healing her up though. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Where? Oh, sniper. Oh. Yeah, he was, he was there. He was trying his best, but he has a support. Oh, He's so. going straight boots of bearing. Glasses are. Why, why do people do this? Is this like some. Boots of bearing of... straight, if you are having a good game, is very good. Um, this is almost like of... some anti propaganda against Sniper 4. He wants to hate Sniper 4. Uh, I, I think that if possible. you're rushing Boots of Bearing on Sniper 4, you want to lose. I, I'm be perfectly yeah, I honest. I wouldn't do it on Sniper. You, you want to lose the game. Congratulations, Sniper. You're losing the game for your team. You have 18 last hits, and your Boots of Bearing are going to do what? Also, if you are a captain of this team, and, or if I was a captain of this team, even if Plague or Teb was a captain of this team and someone said, I want to play Sniper 4, you just mute him. Mute him death. Just, just get him out. Pick him a normal hero. I did play Sniper 4 the other day. <laughs> in yeah, a but joke you, 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 yeah, but you're, you're drunk a lot of the time. No, I, I, I am not drunk. I'm drunk this evening, but I have, I have stopped drinking most days. I'm trying to cut back. So this, 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 a bit this is a weekday game of Sniper 4. I mean, this is just bad. Like, I, I've uh, I've decided, you know what, I was spending too many evenings habitually having a drink. Just, not not even getting drunk, just like having a few cans. But it yeah. adds up, and it's like, the weight adds up, and the calories, and it's obviously very bad for you. So I was like, do you know what, I'm just gonna try to cut back. Radiant and skin. I have successfully cut back in the last, I'd say the last month. And you played Sniper 4 in one of your sober That's a joke stack, isn't it? Uh, just, it's, it's just bad. It, it, it's it's concerning, you know. I I think I think drinking might not be the problem. Maybe drinking is the solution because I've never seen you play sniper before. Before it was bad. We lost. I will say uh, as expected, this is, as this is my my standard opinion on Joe in particular. But the, the oh Joe's Joe a mega general. troll. Joe, lovely, lovely people. Fundamentally, do not understand anything about those. No, they're, they're like they're like literally a million. They're like the the monkeys hitting the, the typewriter, trying to write Shakespeare. Sometimes you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. They have no idea what the difference yeah. is. Yeah, just pick whatever, play whatever. It's fun. I, I feel like happens. I dub a lot with Joe, but I, I feel like maybe it's it's a it's a double negative equals a plus in those sort of games. <laughs> so I think that I played with Joe the other day. And he picked, I, I picked a four. I was like, I'm gonna troll a little bit. I can't remember what four I picked. But you can't have five trolls. You can have one troll pick that sometimes works out. Joe picked Ogre Pos 3. Yeah. And I played Windrunner, which is not really a troll pick, but I'm not a big Windrunner player. You By the end of the game, I was easily months. the only Thanks one with a chance of actually winning us the game. Like it was that bad. We had like an alchemist on the enemy team, a couple of other guys, Pudge, I think. And if I got my ult off on them, I could kill them. And they had like, oh, what do they have? Like some kind of, oh, an oracle. No, not an oracle, something else. 
But it was literally the only way we'd win fights is if I get a shackle off on two of them and get an ult off. It was that bad. They might have had the Underlord as well. They were very tanky. And Joe was Ogre, and he'd gone like Midas, Dagon 5, some other shit, and just did nothing in the fights. Like, absolutely nothing. That happens a lot in the Joe stacks. Joe's just Lads, like. Lads, do, you, do you want to guess what, what <laughs> Zeus has done wrong? Don't click on him. Don't, All right, just have a guess. I'm wrong. not going to highlight him. What do you think Zeus has done wrong? Legion has 20 dual damage at 30 minutes. That's not great. I think I know the answer to that one. I was confused as to why he'd done the order of items he had. I'm going to click on him now yep. because people probably haven't guessed. Manta no shard says 16 HP in his. Yep. I don't he know why Manta. he would ever build Manta no without shard. a shard first. He has no shard. Because he's just he's sending his illusions out. out that oh, are fucking we've useless. got a question. <laughs> why the Manta was built first? Because these, these illusions are fucking useless. <laughs> Look, he might pop it again before Shell gets so, it. So, dare I play. say it, Robertus, in my chat, talks a good game. Really he does. He does. Talks a good he game. He does. You should do this. You should do that. Yeah. All of that shit. Do you know what it is, Ted? He's a Swede, mate. The oh, Swede is he? Always oh, got something oh, to say. That makes so but much sense. Swedes to say. always talk. I like the Swedes. Swedes are generally pretty cool. I know, but they've got a lot to but say. They, you know, they've they got a lot they to talk. say. How was the Berlin? I, I imagine I'm going to be told he's Norwegian in a second, but, you know, so be it. Uh, he is indeed going Hurricane Pike next. He has not got the shot. He has the shot! He, he has, has the shot! The shot. So here we go. The defense of a lifetime for Robertus. Can he hold the Ancient? He's baited a very good initial Oh, bait. the illusions have baited successfully. Well, whatever, Robertus, what can mate, he do I with will, this opening? I will all... Hey, high five them, mate. Look for a high five. Your whole team is dead, you Good fucking job, idiot. Master. <laughs> Steam Cyborg FTV Dokia just <laughs> They got him, boys. Did you see that? They went on my illusion. <laughs> By the way, we lost two lanes. <laughs> Lamau. Tip them. Tip them. You gotta, you gotta take the wins where they come, you know, and these guys, you gotta build morale well, up somehow. Them off here. Oh. I, I say that's a dub. <coughs> I mean, Lass this is. is uh... Lars is going in. Hop over. Nice. Has ages. Oh, why, why was Malinky not killed? Okay, hey, a bit of a dual dub nibble, for, nibble for glasses there, yeah, or, or for someone. And Malinky still died somehow. Get ratchet. Questions will be asked. There will be a student in priority about What's that. A, a dunk missed. Get mass away. No, the dunk is still available. Dunk. Oh no. Yeah. Why was the finger so late? Fantastic. <laughs> Very good player. You know, another I'm, I'm not, another I'm... eye shitters individual. Why is everyone who is shit on eye shitters? I, I can't understand. Are you seriously asking that question? <laughs> Their name is eye shitters. I know, but you know, I thought I made some impact. Apparently not. Oh, why is this game still going? <laughs> For God's sakes! Here comes the Mantas. He's gonna bait again. Ted, do you know what's happened to eye shitters in the most recent iteration? No, mate. Do you, want, do you want to take a stab about who the uh, new members? Oh shit, they got the fucking jug. That was a, a, a big pie. Big assassination. We, we replaced one lad and replaced him with another lad. Mm. Did you replace Krona with KBJ? Not quite. Mm. That, I don't know. We replaced Daniel with KBJ. Wow. Oh my god. You're mid who can only play two heroes? That's a... I, think, I think there's been some jiggling of, of roles. I don't know who plays mid now. This will do Radiant's middle tower is under attack. It's incredible. Have they won a single game yet? They're, they're, I told you they won a series earlier. Against GF and G. Oh, Jeff. Who I, do, I, I don't know who they won a series against. That's that's not my business. It is your business. Manager. You're the manager. Yeah, I know, but so long as the wins are happening. I've got no problems. The coach is not being exact. I'm the coach, of course. So they're in a tournament, and GF and G are one of the main teams in the tournament. And I shitters have won a series. Standing. Uh, Standing so Mime Scorching says we tied with Team Spherical, who were abominable. The Brilliant. The standings so. are that uh, Team Spherical are three and one. Wow. Uh, Goon to National All Stars. I don't know them. Uh, also three and one. I shitters are one and two and one. Nice. And so are GFG. So I shitters and GFG 
are somehow on the same level. This is like the Mena region all over again. Ratchet yeah. is going to die to the Tormi. Team Stray. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he oh. got the... <laughs> oh no, they're all going to oh, die. Stop, they're going to be dead. No. <laughs> Team, Team Stray are one, two, and two. Right. And the uh, the bottom of the leaderboard are naught, naught, and five. Five losses, nothing of anything else. And they are called FGF, which is the uh, the the B team of GFG. Oh. I didn't even know you could. Have a Wait, team. there are players you they, can't they make it into GF and G. To, <laughs> they have enough people to get a B team. Sorry, lads, you got to prove yourself before you join a major org like GF and G. So. <laughs> Wow. I'm going to try and kill Teehee. Bible study group honing in on his kill, but gives up on it. Uh, I think you mean Bibble study group. Oh yeah, you're right. Bibble studies. <laughs> That's Bast, by the way. Bibble study group. Oh, hello! Oh! Okay, that's fucking glorious. Oh, he gets That is lead. absolutely glorious. Call it. Call it. Type the letters. Type them. Don't worry, Malinky's back in. They've got buybacks. Ratchet can save the game still. That was a call and a half from Microsoft PowerPoint. My god. X I shit as individual. For one game. I'm claiming the dub. <laughs> yes, Ratchet! Like Go, Ratchet! Like <laughs> oh no, Ratchet! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Who'd they call here? They called it. Robertus has had enough. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely something for Ratchet. I don't know. If it's I don't know which UL hero I clicked on, but whoever it was, they were not thirteen and eight. I'm gonna say oh, Ratchet. Gonna be Ratchet. Ratchet. I'm gonna That's say Ratchet. Ratchet. Eri, have a fucking word with yourself. We had two games like this tonight. <laughs> I know we've had a couple of months off, but my it was God. Ratchet. Sort it out, Eri. Yeah, you know, ratchet on for for keeping what, the, the, why, the joy of Dota glasses. alive. I feel like Glasses needs to update his name. He was fifteen and one. Mate. He can't be called Glasses anymore. He was fifteen and one like, in a game where the Zeus shit. went mad to before Shard, you and you be had called, Ratchet. Like, Psych or Chud. Chud. Something... Chud is good. Go for Chud. Chud. And a Chud bunch of please. numbers, or just a, like a yeah. bunch of weird characters, and then a big X, something like that. All right. Uh, that's me done. That's the in houses done for this one. That's the in houses. Yeah, that was actually a really good shift for me. By God, well done, Ashwin. Thanks for carrying, <laughs> bud. It's good to be back. Some good film chat. Uh, Plague, thank you for. It was just me and Plague for two games. Oh, we almost got Suns fan, almost got Cine, but in in the end, it was just the two of us. And I thought we had a bloody good chat. You almost got Cine. Those, those gets know. were uh, equal the value. Really say. making uh, making waves. Yeah. Well, the Shannon couldn't do it, but we might get him another week. Get a bit of Suns fan cast again. Yeah. I'd love to see what he makes of your ratchets. You know what I mean? I want to know what he makes of them. Anyway, thank you, boys. I will see you anon. Peace, peace, Pleasure peace. Pleasure as always. Peace, peace, peace. Right. Thank you to Eri for organising the in-houses. Thank you to everyone that took part this evening. All 30 players. Well done. Uh, blame Eri. Blame Eri for the parlous state of these matches. We had one good game out of three. And two mega stomps. I think he's probably dipped because it's very late in Cyprus. But yes, thank you very much. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers for watching. Take it easy. Peace out.